Athlete and Westside on XFM 104.9, sunny day, 19, uh, 2007. <laughs> going so well, wasn't it? Yeah. Going so well, Ricky then, Gervais. Once again, the English language <laughs> tripped you up. <laughs> the, the mouth with the tongue lips. <laughs> exactly. was all over the brain and talk. <laughs> the brain and talk through the throat. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, language is his tool. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, Rick, I think we should do some introductions because I think it seems to me every week we kind of everyone knows who you are because you're you know the face of the moment, but uh, they forget who you know me and the K Man are. Well, with me, Steve Merchant. Hi, and the K Man, who's our producer and friend. And uh, can I just say that I really look forward to this show. Oh. Like, it, you know, I, I, I get I'm like, oh great, we're gonna do a show, and we're gonna play some tracks we like and have a laugh. But now it's I, I'm looking forward to meeting Carl. Of course. Honestly, I come in and I see his face and then I go, all right. And I'm, you know, I just, just great, like a, just a little friend. Do you mm. know what I mean? Mm. You know when a kid comes on to play with a friend, you go, oh, and they come, come out to play and it's like little friends. It's like that with Carl. Yeah. Yeah, and if we don't see him in the week, you see, we deliberately stay away from him in the week so that he'll, you know, he'll be yeah. fresh to us. Yeah, it was, go on. You start off friendly, like you did today, <laughs> and as soon as Steve turns up, you start getting nasty and saying things about my little bald head. No, I said, I, look, okay, right, listen, let me explain. Carl was making the tea, and you know those bins, the sort of like a round sort of metal Mickey type bin that you can take off the thing? I went, oh, that would make a good little helmet. It would make it look like metal Mickey because it's the same shape as his head. Sure. Right? And I put it on, and so the far, so good, really. No problem there. <laughs> <laughs> That's just two mates having a laugh. <laughs> right. You're putting a bin on another man's head. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. So I put it on and the swing bit, through gravity in the angle, swung and hit him in the nose. Sure. Right? He went, ow. And I went, I said something like, it's all right. Yeah, of course, because you were being amused. <laughs> yeah, I said, it's all right, don't worry. Yeah. And he went, no, I've just washed my hair. Yeah. That annoyed me. That did annoy you, sure. Because just because there was lots of, like, shit and coffee and, and horrible... Uh, gunk. In his in, hair or? No, in the, <laughs> in the inside of the bin. Sure. But what annoyed me is, he's hardly got any hair. At this point, he looks so, like Moby. Yeah, so I said, I, I took the bin off. Yeah. And it, I was having a laugh, and it, I thought, you, you, you ruined my burn is what you Do you know thought? what I mean? I, I said, what's your hair? I said, we could do that now in 30 seconds. Yes. And he looked at me like I was in the wrong. <laughs> I know. Rick, so that, that annoys me about I know. Him. That doesn't yeah. annoy me about him. Um, but otherwise, he's like, he's like childlike. Yeah, you know, in so many great. Other ways. He doesn't understand that he's hurting your emotions and your yeah. feelings. Yeah, but but also, right, we were playing football. So I can't play football, right? And so we were playing. Was that football. just in the office or? Yeah, just in right, the office yeah. before you came, right? And um, we were sort of kicking it back and forth, and I started kicking it a bit hard. And uh, but he was quite good. I, I said, I said, this is great, right? And uh, we finished anyway because we thought we'd break some up. And um, I went, I bet you were quite good at football, weren't you? And I actually thought, I thought he looked like quite a natural. You know, I thought he'd be good. He's from the north, and I thought he, that's all he'd have. Yeah, you know I mean, <laughs> exactly. Right? And he went, I said, uh, I suppose you're quite good at football. And he turned the quickest flash and went, I've scored once. <laughs> right? He said, and that's because I was being chased by a bee. <laughs> <laughs> and I went, oh. save it. Yeah. He went, no, I said, please, please save it. Because I want to tell Steve that. No, you can continue now. Please tell us the rest of the story. You've scored a goal once well, you because you're being chased by a bee. Yeah, you've done it now, really. I was on the, uh, there I must be more the, to that story, <laughs> came in. I was in the school team. I wasn't that good as a kid at football, to right. be honest. Um, <laughs> mainly down to, I think it's because my dad, my dad wasn't into football. Right. And I think that's the way it works, and if your dad's into it, mm. then you could be a footballer when you're older. Sure. Yeah. Because you're into it. And, um, so I was in the school team because I got on with the other lads. Uh -huh. and they, let, they let me in the team. Popular guy, yeah. Sure. And, um, yeah, I was stood there doing nothing because I didn't really know what to do. I didn't, I never knew which way I was meant to be shooting. Yep. Yeah. I uh, got all that messed up. Yeah, that is a problem. I just stood there, right, and, uh, with my hands behind my back, <laughs> and, uh, something landed on me, on, like, this part of my thumb. You got, you can't just point, it's radio. It's this bit here. Right, yeah. Uh, the, the, fleshy fleshy bit, the, yeah. the fleshy, fleshy bit of the thumb, thumb. Yeah. yeah. And I thought, oh, what's that? <laughs> and I looked down, and it was a thumb. Oh, it was a bee, yeah. It was a bee on me, so I start running, <laughs> yeah. try to get away from it, and bees, Actually, something interesting about bees, more chance of getting stung by a bee in windy weather than any other sort of weather. That's incredible. Uh, anyway, so I'm running away. <laughs> and he said there was no more. Extraordinary. I've already learned many, many things. <laughs> You're being chased by the bees. So it's windy. I'm running. It's on your thumb. Is it still on your thumb now? It's sort of gripping onto me like a stag clever, beetle. Clever. Like a stag beetle. I love his... Oh, <laughs> or a bee. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I'm, I'm running. And I, I, I'm running towards, like, the goal. Yeah. Oh, God. And the ball comes to me. Yes. Wallop, get it in. Brilliant. What happened to the bee Did it sting you? They die, don't they? <laughs> I mean, ultimately it died, sure, but did, at that particular moment <laughs> oh, did it sting you? This was probably about 20 years ago, so I imagine... No, no, no. Once a bee stings so you, So did it sting you? Yeah, but did it sting you? Yeah. Right, that was the question. When did it sting you? 
when I was playing football. No! <laughs> No. Carl, do you want me asking? You say you're on the school football team. Was there just <laughs> eleven boys at your school? Listen, listen, Carl. Oh, what I mean is, at what point in this story did the bee sting you? Uh, straight away After or half time? <laughs> <laughs> Play a record, man. <laughs> <then. laughs> <laughs> Depeche Mode, I Feel Loved, on XFM 104.9. It's about 17 minutes past one on this just... Saturday. Go on. We'll never interrupt me when it's going that well. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know what I was thinking of. That was about, that was my record. That was about four or five sentences. True, true. They I don't know what I was thinking semantic syntax, there was, there was capital letters, full stops, yeah. grammar, you everything. You didn't even get the time out, did you? Why? What time was it? Quick, what time was it? I interrupted you. Sorry, I passed. I was so eager. One. XFM 104.9, I'm Ricky Gervais, with me. Steve Smirch. Merchant. Smirch. And the K-Man. The K-Man. We're all giving ourselves nicknames now. Yes. Can I just clear something up? Just, this is only a very, very personal thing. Um, lots of people who listen to the show that I've spoken to, friends of friends and stuff, they think that I'm the guy that plays Gareth in The Office, because my voice is obviously very similar. It couldn't be further than the truth. It's, it's, I'm so, that's so not the case. If anyone's listening, they couldn't think be it's me. Than the truth. It I don't like want to take credit for it. Mackenzie's performance. That's a guy called Mackenzie yeah. Crook. He's a brilliant actor. Yeah. Everyone's, everyone's seen his performance. It's not me. Admittedly, he has loosely based his accent for the character on my accent, because obviously it's a comical accent. We all admit that. Yeah. We all agree with that. But that's it. That's where the similarity ends. Yeah. Oh, Mackenzie's a good looking fellow, isn't he? He's a good looking lad. I mean, that's not a, that's not you're a thing. You're not me. I know, because no. you're saying I'm a good looking guy as well. You're just you're saying we're two differently good looking guys. Yeah, uh, Carl, it's all people are all different looks. I mean, you could say Brad Pitt's good looking, and then you could say George Clooney's good looking, and they're both great looking blokes, they don't look alike. Exactly. So for me to say, um, Steve and Mackenzie aren't alike, Mackenzie's a good looking fella. Exactly. You, you know, just the, if you look at the Venn guy, guy around there, they weren't mutually exclusive, there would be a crossover of good lookingness. Yeah, and I'm in that pool with Brad Pitt and George Clooney. Wow. Well, it's quite a big pool, Rick, and I'm in there, certainly with them. Yeah, not... Yeah. I mean, I'm in one of those Venn diagram circles. You are, yeah. You're over this one. What so do you want to there? <laughs> that's, I noticed that's a separate one, floating off from all the others. Yeah, lizards and parrots. Ah, oh, right. Okay. Right. So it's good to be included <laughs> in something, though. It's good to be part of a gang, Carl. That's very important. <laughs> yeah. Only that's cleared up. Depeche Mode good. there, and I feel loved. Who would have thought Depeche Mode would have been that huge? I think, I think I'm seeing little lads from Basildon with little mm. plinky plonky so I thought that'd be it. They'd be like Visage or something. Mm. That'd be it. And now they're stadium rock fillers. They're yeah. huge. They conquered America. He went through some hard times, he came up the other way and well done. But see, I think this very, what you just said there is a very good example of why they are and, what, and why certain other bands aren't. Because if you think about it, for me, you see, whenever I think of a band name, if I see a new band's come along or whatever, I always use a very simple test, which is, can you imagine that you're the announcer at a huge event, maybe it's like broadcasting around the world like Live Aid or Nelson something. Nelson Mandela Or concert. it's a Nelson Mandela Freedom Concert. Yeah. And you can imagine someone He's saying, there, he's there. Nelson's there. Yeah, with the there. Spice Girls. Oh, they're all there, there. But you can imagine someone saying, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage, Depeche Mode. Yeah. Got, 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 they the Rolling gentlemen. Stones. The Who. Exactly. But you can't imagine someone saying, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage, Visage. Ladies and you know gentlemen, mean? will you please welcome our headline act? Welcome Idlewild. <laughs> exactly. It ladies does... and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage, Ned's Atomic Dustbin. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't... Do you know what I mean? You just know- The that Levelers! Some bands aren't gonna make it. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage, Mega City 4! <laughs> do you know what I mean? It's just, just a simple test. We'd like you to do that at If home. you're thinking of, if you're thinking of, uh, starting a band, or you've just named your band, you're yeah. just beginning, just tell, phone in, tell us, or email in, tell us what your yeah. band name is, and we and will, we will do, use that simple and test. And we will do the test. Ladies and gentlemen, will you please welcome to the stage... The Frank and Walters! <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy Eat World. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage, Cooper Temple Claws. <laughs> I don't think it's gonna happen for those lads. <laughs> it is a good it's one. It's a simple test, anyway, but uh, hundred you know, reasons, please welcome to the stage, hundred reasons. Hundred reasons I think would work quite well. <laughs> We're just gonna give the email address, ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. reasons if I could. Ladies and gentlemen, will you please welcome to the stage, Pop Will Eat Itself! <laughs> Carl, have you got like a sound effect or something of like, can we get the atmosphere Jeering. we're gonna test? Jeering. We'll seek it out with. Have you got something there? Have a look on there. I'll just, I'm just looking in the NME 
uh, for the kind of forthcoming gigs of the smaller known bands. And uh, it might be a useful place to uh, just begin the... Uh, Ladies test. and gentlemen, peoples around the world, will you please welcome to the stage, Chumba Awamba! <laughs> Have you got a sound effect? Have you got one? Nice, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, will you please welcome to the stage, the Parkinsons! <laughs> They're playing in Leicester this week, uh, so uh, I look forward to that. That's them. a good plug, isn't it? Uh, let me see who else. If, if anyone wants to pop down to Leicester to see the Parkinsons, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage, Cycle Fly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Oh, there's a, there's a genuine one here. This is someone. It's Simon's uh, emailed, and he says, uh, "Will you just test this name for us?" Okay, Carl, if you can, there you go. Ladies and gentlemen, will you please welcome to the stage, Coach. <laughs> <laughs> not utterly convinced. No. It's not too bad. It's not too I'm bad. worried about the sound effect. We, stra we start to sound like Chris Moyles or something. When Moyles, play he, well, he's a top broadcaster. Everyone loves him. Losing weight as well. He is hilarious. <laughs> funny, funny man. <laughs> just, there's one more coming here. I'll just check this one. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, will you please welcome, this is Chris Knoxford. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome, Meanwhile, Back in Communist Russia. <laughs> is that a band? I assume so. I assume it's his band, Yeah, isn't it? yeah. Well, how does he listen to us in, uh, hold on, man, this is only local radio. How does he listen to us in Oxford? Well, if only there was some kind of digital format that he could listen via the web net. What well, is it? What is the, uh, what is it? What? How does he listen in Oxford? He can listen on Sky Digital. Go on. Channel 864. Lovely. 864. Yeah. And, um, on, on the, the web. Yeah. Okay, what would that web address be? xfm.co.uk. Sure. Click on the audio. Yep. And uh, you get you get XFM ten seconds behind. It okay. actually happened. Perfect. Uh, just just uh, of interest, what's the point of saying that they if they can't sort of get us in London to listen to that because <laughs> they won't be and they're, they're either they're already they're either in London so they won't go through this nonsense or they're in Leicester. And they can't hear us saying Sky Digital. Yeah, we haven't thought that through at all. Because you might work in London for a bit and then have a Go back and spread the word. And like, leave. Yeah. Go back and spread the word like disciples. Move back to Leicester. Yeah. Tell your mates. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Soon, any number of combinations. Soon XFM is the most listened to radio station in Britain. Yeah. Mm. Mm. What we need is uh, people on Radio 2 to give it a plug every day. <laughs> That'd be ideal. Yeah, yeah. or Radio 1. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Any of the big rivals. Virgin. Yeah. I mean, we've often plugged Virgin. It's a good station. 105.8 Virgin Radio London. It's a great station. Really good station. Part 106.2. <laughs> Lovely. You're listening to Magic 105.4. <laughs> Are you getting you're getting quite a lot of voiceover work now, aren't you? I am. Uh, yeah. That's not. I've stopped all that though. Have you? Yeah. All oh, right. Okay. Yeah. No, it's all right. It's good. Well, you know, I, you know, I'm, I'm all right now. I've got yeah. a bit of money. Classic 60s bands, I've just suddenly... Ladies and gentlemen, will you please welcome to the stage, The Scaffold! Oh, The Scaffold. You, you remember The a, Scaffold, Carl? You picked yeah. the, the lead singer looks a bit like him. But you know whose brother that is in The Scaffold, don't you? Mike McGear. Do you know whose brother that is? What? Do you remember the, the scaffold? scaffold? They did, uh, yeah, we'll scaffold. drink a drink a drink to Lily the Pink, the Pink, the Pink, the Pink, the Roll, the Human Red. Yeah, thank you very much for the entry. Yeah. I, and do you know whose brother that is? Whose brother? The lead singer? No, the Mike McGear in it. The sort of one of the main men in it. He's one of the songwriters in uh, no, the Scaffold. No. Paul McCartney. You're Is he? Thinking. Yeah. I didn't realise that. Huh? Yeah, that's Paul McCartney's brother. Think, think, think of that when they go in for Christmas. <laughs> so I think Lily the Pink was what about 1970? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was number one, wasn't it? Christmas. Yeah, number one? yeah, big number one. Yeah, I might know if it was Christmas number one. Two Little Boys was 1969. Last. Yeah, that, it definitely was number one. Yeah, scaffold, but I don't know if it was scaffold scaffold one. It was, it yeah. was, it was, because yeah. I remember it was, I did it in Really? Months, yeah. Yeah. Wow. So they go home at Christmas and <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. McCartney goes, All right, boys, how are, how are you, Paul? How are you doing? I'm just starting a new band called Wings. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, this is Linda. All right, don't forget, sit down. Mike, what are you doing? Just had a number one. Brilliant, round of applause. How many number ones do you have, Paul? Uh, 19. Still. We know what we like, don't we? We'll drink, 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 the long and winding. Boring. Road. We'll oh. drink a drink a drink. Well. drink a Linda, do you want to be in uh, the scaffold? We're probably going to go on tour and stuff. I know you love it. Well, well, I quite like it. Yeah. Uh, we'll drink a drink a drink a drink You're not going to be in Wings if you're going to play with him. Well, I got you know make a tricky decision. I mean, that's a no, great song. Everyone's doing, loving it. It's Christmas number one. What are you doing eating his bacon? Well, I love you it. Don't eat, you don't eat bacon. Yeah, but I love the music. He's, I mean, he's a great Stop guy. Stop it! What are you doing? Well, I just you know I love the music. We'll drink a drink a drink to live the pink. No, no, you don't. Yesterday. All my troubles seem so oh, Thank you very much for the <laughs> eight three iron. <laughs> oh, that. imagine that! Because imagine that, Devon going. Well, you've had nineteen number ones. 
I mean, you know, it can be very tight. Yeah, yeah if yeah. you stay like this with a yeah. scaffold, yeah. I'm going to ra- rule the 70s. <laughs> yeah, if things that carry on going like they're going now, <laughs> the scaffold. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> we please welcome, welcome to the stage, Beck. Oh, nice one. Dandy Warhols. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the Dandy Warhols. There you are, it's, not, it's never going to That open. sounds like levellers crossed with w- wonder <laughs> stuff. Rubbish, isn't it, really? I mean, well, you know, it's fine, it's chirpy. It's a nice it's, old song, but it's, it's, you know, it's not... It's that thing of it's just not essential. You I just don't it. really need it in your life. You, if, it never, if it never occurred, you wouldn't mind. Yeah. You know? Do you know what Carl just said? Go on. Were you listening? Not really. He looked out the window, and he looked at me, and he was looking at me, and I looked over at him, and he looked, I said, see, now's... That that's that would be good to die now. I went, what? He went that weather. That would be good to die. And I said, of what? He went old age. Yeah. What's going on up there? He's a philosopher, Rick. He is. He's on he? a different plane no, you to can't us. Say it like that. The other week, I came in when it was really miserable, and I said to you, God, can you imagine dying today? Yeah. Because whereas today you feel it would be a much better day to die because it's bright. You have the curtains open, sun sure. shining. It's like I mean, you'd world. still be a bit angsty about the dying thing, wouldn't you? I mean, I don't suppose that would be alleviated. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Okay. Well, um, <laughs> yeah. hopefully we'll still be broadcasting, you know, when one of us reaches that happy moment and we can, um, uh, we can check. Yeah. It's cu- quite a lot of emails, Rick, coming in about, uh, band names. I think a lot of people are going wrong for a simple reason. They think it's funny to have an ironic band name. Yeah. They think it's a bit comical. And I yeah. just don't think there's any great bands that have had a comical name that have made it into what stadium was that, filling. What was that band, Where's Me Jumper? What were they called? I don't know what they were called. I mean, the obvious example of one that, that was never going to make it, Splo- internationally. Splodgeness Abounds? <laughs> Splodgeness Abounds? No. I like Splod- them, though. Splodgeness Abounds? Splodgeness Abounds, they were great. Well, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage, Carter the Unstoppable Sex Machine! <laughs> USM. These are some of the ones we've had emailed in. These are bands, obviously, that haven't mailed, made it so far, and I don't think they will. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage, The Lazy Birds. Nope. No. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage, The Paper Clips. That's not a real band. That's what is it? someone sent in. I remember, yeah, but no band name is weirder than the others, and also you grow into it. I mean, the, St- the Stones and the Beatles are iconic because they are iconic bands. What you think you'll grow into? Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Shuttle Rock. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Treehouse Casino. I don't think they're gonna. <laughs> That's just made up. Well, possibly. Well, they all are. But they all obviously. Are. But my point is, people say there's yeah. no logic to band names. But if you think a band name like the Smiths, Great. that's genius. It, is, it yeah. sums up everything that band is about. Yeah. You know, the kind of they're, they're capturing that mediocre world of grim up northness. You know, my favourite Sonic Youth. Sonic Youth is genius. Nirvana. These are these are incredible na- band names. So yeah. there is some logic to it. Yeah. I genuinely Sonic believe it. It's not just arbitrary words. What about the madness? Cure. The Mad- Cure. Madness sounds rubbish, well, but they're good, aren't they? Yeah, but again, they're, they're never gonna be. They were never going to be world beaters. But they were a comical band, essentially. Yeah, they, they were, were a knees up party band. Yeah. Madness is fine for that. But they had some great songs as well, and it, 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 but it did, then, it, then it sort of turned it all. Cause then I mean, Rick, I don't know how many members. Not Home Today is a great song. I'm this, serious is, this is from an email. I don't know how many members of the band there are in Chimney Factory. <laughs> <laughs> but which. If there's five people, who decided? Had they all agreed? Yeah, that's a great. That's the best name you know we've ever decided. Dell. Right. Well, he's, he started the band and they yeah. ra- rehearsed around his house. So Dale went, look, it's called Chimney Factory because yeah. my granny's doing it. They go, all right, Dale, but it's not, I've got some other, but no, yeah. it's called Chimney Factory. I've got, I own the van and the amps. As paper clips gone, there's a band in Leicester <laughs> called Paper Clips. We can't, d- you know, we'd just argue over yeah. that forever. Yeah. And anyway, just all I'm saying is think before you name your band, all right? Because it's never going to happen if you've got a comical band name. There was a feminist band called Clitoris All Sorts, <laughs> which right. is quite good, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, but you laugh and then you just think, oh. Yeah. You know, I'm never gonna have that on my t-shirt. <laughs> Imagine that. Clitoris all sorts. <laughs> it's that time of the day now, talking of that. Yep. Um, Song for the Lovers. Sure, it's beautiful. Now, Steve, uh, I mean, I will play great old tunes to the cows come in. We got, yes. we got to give them a little bit of Dandy Warhols and Air and Athlete. I know that, and they're mm. great, they're good, right? But, um, I wanted to play a Cat Stevens song, but I thought I'd better not, because I've, you know, 
play that a little bit. And we quite like resurrecting old reputations, don't we? People like Alton John who are had bad faces or David Bowie. And, people whose you know, names now are l largely laughed at in yeah. uh, the, the serious yeah. rock or people circles. that people might not have considered. I thought Cat Stevens, oh no, Rod Stewart, I thought. Well, see, Rod Stewart, many people now are thinking of the leopard, hot pants yeah. and the ludicrous yeah, hair. Yeah, think thinking I'm sexy and all those sort of awful stadium sort of disco things. But he wrote beautiful tracks from Maggie May through, and I thought, hold on, two birds with one stone. What about a Rod Stewart song? Written by Cat Stevens. Wow. Is there such a thing? The first cut is the deepest. Let's hear it, Rick. On this album as well is The Killing of George. It, Georgie Part 1 and 2, remember? About the gay bloke. George Boy was gay, I guess. His favourite song. Right. Carl's favourite song. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. And uh, I was going, oh yeah, I remember that, yeah. I said about, um, and I said, uh, did not intend to take his life. He just pushed it when he, he gets mugged and killed. Do you know what he said? I was sitting outside, I was, I was singing, I'm taking the He went, well, I said, as I said, they go out too late. <laughs> they go out too yeah. late? He meant gay people go out too late. He went, no, they do. I went, what do you mean? He said, well, they're always out, they go out when people are coming home. He said, if he'd have been in bed by ten, he'd still be alive today. <laughs> That's a sobering uh, lesson, And he went, gone. there's one that works here and he's shattered every Monday. <laughs> <laughs> oh, if you're gay and you're listening, just be in bed earlier. Go yeah. out when sensible people go out. Yeah. You're right, we're not on the continent, Carl, if, is if, you, if you're gay and you're not in bed by ten, Go home. Yeah. I don't get it. First cut is the deepest, Rod Stewart. Song for the night. Air, don't be light, XFM, mm -hmm. 104.9, 5 to 2. Absolutely. Ricky Richard Bays with me, Steve, Steve Merchant. Merchant. Smirch. Smirch. The Smirch. The Smirch. And the K-Man. KP, Carl Pilkerton, the K man. Pressing the buttons. Yeah. See that in Heat this week? What was it? About the campaign to stop Carl going back to Manchester. You know, because he's a miserable sort of northerner who goes, London's crap and I want to go back up north. Yeah. And I, I, I only need 40 quid a week to live up there like King and all that sort of <laughs> yes. rubbish. Right. Well, uh, um, uh, Boyd from Heat, um, well, we met him at the um, that award ceremony. Oh yeah, and uh, we were saying about oh yeah, he really enjoys Carl. Like, he's getting a lot of a lot oh, people, people like Carl. And I was going oh yeah, but he's thinking of leaving. He's going oh st start a campaign, and he did, and he put it in there. So the campaign. So write in if you like Carl. If, if, if you think he's really annoying, then we'll stop talking to him. Yeah. But I mean, I like him. I love him. Yeah. Have you ever read the uh, White Man? The White Van Man column in The Sun, Carl. I've seen it, Are you yeah. familiar with this? This is where every day in The Sun they interview a guy who drives a, a van, a white van, just, you know, in order to get the kind of voice of the man on the street in the paper. Mm -hmm. And he has to answer, uh, or just give his opinions, really, on uh, events that have made the news each week. Just thought we could maybe throw some of these at you, Carl. Go Because we know, you'll just see what your, your views are. Yeah. So, um, just the first thing that comes into your mind, the sort of, your initial reaction to it's each of these. It's top of all these, but you don't need to know about them, it's just your philosophy on it. Yeah, so just your views. You know, yeah. I have um, had a few days off this week, remember, so I don't know what's going on in the world. <laughs> yeah, you, you, I mean, you stayed in London, though, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you didn't, you didn't bury yourself, <laughs> yeah. did you? And honestly, the news, but I didn't. Okay. Right. Um, so, what are your view, what was your view on Will Young beating Gareth Gates in the final of Pop Idol? Don't like him. No. You know what I was thinking about when I was watching it all the way through? Yeah. How he looks like he's got a wire coat hanger in his gob. That's sort of... <laughs> right. Again, it's radio, Carl. Radio. It's a great so face. It's a funny face you're pulling, doesn't yeah, you? Yeah, and, you know, but, you know, a radio. And is that, that's a problem for you, is it? And, and just the way he's from a really rich family. I opened mm -hmm. up the paper on the, on the Monday or something, and it had, like, how he went to a posh school and he's got loads of money already. Yeah. It's just a bit... Okay. You know. Right, yeah. no, what's okay. the second right. question? Um... There have been huge rises in street crime, especially muggings and carjackings. What's your view there? More youth clubs are needed, aren't they? <laughs> you think more youth clubs? I like that. No, I can't. No, I like that because it's so 1950s. Yeah. It's, it's sort funny. of like you want to bobby on the beat that'll clip yeah. you around the ear. So once they've come Is out of it, national service... Yeah, yeah. No, I love that. And, it, and if you find someone smoking a wood bomb, you make them smoke 50. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, this is great. That is great. Did, did, you, did you used to go to uh, youth clubs? Yeah. And they, they kept you out of trouble? You used to get into a fight afterwards when sure. you came out. But for the sort of hour and a half you were right. there. You had a bit of pool and some boxing and yeah. a bit of pop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I more more youth clubs, that's good. I love him. Um, I love him. If you're at home, just make notes, because this is brilliant stuff. Honestly, you won't hear more honest, 
from the heart exactly stuff opinions. than this. This is great. Go on. This is not pre-planned. These are your direct responses now. Oh, I, pr- I promise you, Carl did not know what we were going to do. He never knows what we're going to do, and he always answers honestly. That is the beauty of Carl. What is it's your not view? It's not an act. What is your view, Carl, on New York's former mayor becoming Sir Rudy Giuliani? Sir Rudy Giuliani. Is he happy with it? <laughs> <laughs> he appears to be pleased with it. Let it go ahead. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> Let okay. it go ahead. Oh, he's genius. Okay. Um, is he happy with it? He's like your nan. Yeah, yeah. Is what do you make of uh, Michael Greco's character Beppe being axed from EastEnders? Uh. Problem for you? The whole soap thing. What's it's back in Coronation Street, isn't she? Uh, what's her name? Who? Beth. Yeah. She thought she'd go off and be yeah. a bigger star. Yeah. All went wrong. And now she's coming back. Yeah. yeah. Always happens, doesn't Deppy it? will be back. Yeah. No one really cares. Sure, sure. Yeah. What, was, what was the van report? I, what was the guy? The white van the man side? says, uh, obviously they feel the character has run his course, but yeah. I think <laughs> he's a pretty good actor and I can't understand why. So, I mean, obviously there's a, a white van man there mm. who's also got an opinion on script the, development. The through line, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah like the, the through line of soap opera. The, the, the 12 week narrative, the, the arc really shows it's itself up. The two, two last ones I want your oh. opinion on here. Um, what do you make of a cat that's been cloned in a secret 2.5 million research project? To find out what? If what, they can clone it? cats, yeah. Have they had to hurt it? Sorry? Have they had to sort of hurt it to do that? Have they had to hurt it? Yeah, or is it just scraping its tongue for some stuff? I no, think the cat's it, fine. The point is that they're cloning a, a, another creature which is potentially very dangerous. Have you seen that film where they bring Hitler back? <laughs> <laughs> that cat. What if that cat turned out to be a world dictator? Exactly. What do you reckon of no. cloning generally, Carl? You concerned about it? I well, think they're cloning for organs, you know, they, they just grow them for the, you know. Do you know what cloning means? <laughs> yeah, it's when you, like, make something else that's the same, isn't it? Right. Yeah, I mean, it's not going to do any harm. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> that's great. And finally... Let's do on the World Council. Yeah, yeah. Finally, uh, what do you make of some city workers who were caught bonking in the glass lifts of the Lloyds building? What do I make of it? Yeah. Is that a problem for you? Do you think that's unprofessional? Was it the lunch break or...? I think it was lunch break. <laughs> yeah. It was their own... Right. It's their own time, <laughs> I think, fair enough. <laughs> it only takes 45 seconds to go from the bottom to the top. Is that a problem? They moved quickly. They acted, you know, on instinct. You think fair enough? If, they, if that's their natural instincts and they're both consenting, you think fine? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thanks very much, Carl. Thanks right. very much, Carl. Carl, we'll have uh, more of uh, Carl's uh, world-weary opinions next time uh, on the show. At least I want to play a track that I love. I, I, I can't wait for this track. It's, it's by a great band. Just going to do it before Steve does this. Uh, coming up, we're going to give away a great game. I've, um, well, I'm sort of clearing out my flat with a tiny and we've got, you know, a lot of junk there. And uh, we're going to give away a great game coming up. You've seen it, Steve. You're excited. I'm looking forward to that. It's, it's a board, board game. That. It's it? a board game that we're all going to sign. It's going to be signed by Jerv Smirch, KP the K-Man. From so you could win that. The classic album Copper Blue by Sugar. Listening to it again recently reminded how good it was. Yeah. This is the track Hoover Dam. Play it. <laughs> Now. White Stripes, fell in love with a girl on XFM 104.9, it's ten past two. Right, okay, that's the first hour out of the way. Next hour, Steve, I've got a game to give away. As I said, I'm sort of cleaning out my flat a little bit and uh, we were going to throw away stuff and I went, I went to say, oh, whoa, 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 don't throw that away. Yeah. I can give that away on the show because XFM don't give us anything to give away. No. Does anyone care what happens weekends? No. There's people coming here going, oh, he hasn't turned up, fiddling with stuff, fire alarms going off. The library, but we were looking for a track we played a couple of weeks ago on the same album, and it's gone. Yeah, it's been pinched since we last played it. This is a, I can't believe it, they're moving, they're, that's a, like a tip out there, and I have to... Yeah. <laughs> no, it is a disgrace, Carl. It is. It is absolutely, it's disgusting. How it's many just... of the DJs on this station have won multiple awards like Ricky Gervais? Yeah. I'd, I'd, I'd how many of them are double award are winning? To have someone of my calibre. I hurt my ankle, didn't I? Moving a chair. I had to move and move my own chair in here, and I hit my ankle. That'll teach me not to wear socks. Yeah. The socks would have just taken out the stick. I think, I think just walking around barefoot generally is kind of <laughs> London. You know, there's the needles, Rick, there's all sorts I of I know, or that, well, Posh does it in her video, she walks around barefoot. Oh, you love My it. heart's got a mind of its own. Ricky absolutely loves the current Victoria Beckham. Yeah, da 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 I like the sentiment, my heart's got a mind of its own. It's like, doesn't matter what I'm thinking in my head, my heart says something else. Of course, what we did for the last week was change the lyrics. Just walk around do. for ages. Does anyone else do that? Just going, things like, um, things like, my wife's got a car of her own. 
Uh, it's just things like that and uh, my, seriously hours of amusement doing that. <laughs> just changing it uh, to say uh, uh, my my knob's got, got some balls of its own we've done that for a week meant to be working yeah um yeah anyway you were going to give away this game Rick yeah it's called Donuts and it's a game for four players or two to four have players have you ever played it yourself um I watched we sort of got it for a party and I watched some people um, Can I try and sell it to punters who may... Yeah, go on. Play the part of a crazy donut-loving elephant in this hilarious game of fun and fast action. Yeah. You put on a little elephant thing and you have to pull up the... Ne get up the donuts. Brilliant. Can you be the first elephant to get all your donuts on your trunk? Be, f uh, be the first one... Uh, sorry, the first one is... Sorry, this isn't a sex game, by the way. There's no euphemisms there. Some of this is a bit slightly damaged, the packaging. That's why I couldn't read that. You're though. joking. Yeah. But don't worry, because you're not asking there. much for this, are you? <laughs> 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 we'll start at five pounds. Bear in uh, mind it'll be signed by Double Award yeah, Ricky Rick and No, Jones. of course it's free. And, uh, um, Carl went, have you got a question? I went, no. He said, uh, well, something about the elephant man. I went, <laughs> something about the elephant yeah, man. Yeah, and I went, uh, yeah. You know, John Merrick, he went, yeah. He went, yeah, something about that. Awful, wasn't it? I went, you know where Michael Jackson actually bid for the skeleton of that? And, uh, he went, what, would the skeleton be affected? I went, without it grows, it, that's what happens, it's nice. And he went, you don't see any of that about these days, do you? <laughs> <laughs> any great, I just said save it. Although, of course, you have to put on these masks when you play Donutters, so yeah. in a strange way, that looks kind of Merrick-esque. Yeah. Uh, go... And, um, the game, Rick, I should just tell people listening, is, is Elephantastic. It is, it is. <laughs> it says that on the box. It so is Elephantastic. Right. It is Elephantastic. I mean, you yourself, can I say yeah. a question, actually? This go is on. a possible question. Okay. Should we um, sign it first? We should sign it, but, uh, yeah. based on the Elephant Man question, obviously, mm. um, we all know who directed the Elephant Man film. Sure, don't sure. We? Mm. So yeah. Parker, no. David Lynch. Lynch, of course, yeah. But uh, do you know who one of the um, the people that got that film made was? He's a very famous comedian. It was his production company that got it up, up and running. He may be an executive producer. I think he was even the producer of it. And no. uh, he's an Ameri famous American comic actually. You wouldn't imagine this was the same guy who is also producing a very serious sober film like The Elephant Man, alright? We want to know who was that man. It's a bit hard for that. Well, yeah, but I mean that'll, sort of, that'll separate the from that, the chat. Hold on, oh. have you seen anything else that's Elephantastic? Not even Wellafant was Elephantastic, he was Wellafantastic. Rick, have you, have you got any more ta uh, memorabilia that you want to uh, give <laughs> yeah, to people? Maybe get rid of, of, yeah. Because I have to say, I've got the loads... The council won't take it away. I've got loads of junk in my house. I've got an old fridge freezer in the front garden. Anyone's welcome to come and pick that up any time, I'll sign it for them. But what about children climbing in it? That's not one of those with the handles, is it? There's several children trapped in there. <laughs> 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 yeah, but that's a sobering lesson. You know what, right? Who won't come and pick it up. It's um, a problem though, isn't it? Because you can't just... Smash it up, you're right, no. I don't no. know what you meant to do. Well, listen, right, when I was growing up, I remember the council, um, used to charge five pounds or something to take away, like, cookers and fridges, so my dad used to bury them. Mm. Down the bottom of my garden, I don't know, th th there's, there's a cooker, there's a fridge, fr there's a freezer of some sort, there's a dog and a couple of cats, they were dead. I'm not saying fair. my, I mean, my father's quite a mean man, as you know, that, uh, yeah. that, but he, uh, my dad used to uh, do that with dead relatives. <laughs> Yeah, because yeah. those funeral parties very, take the very piss. Very, very expensive. So a, a, a funeral can be, you know, up to 40 quid. <laughs> exactly. You know what I mean? Whereas so a shovel, a shovel borrowed yeah. off the bloke next door, yeah, yeah, that's a and, massive saving. And not given back, to be honest. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, well, he's going to go soon. <laughs> was, was, was he going to say? Okay, to win oh. Donutters, signed by Mr. Ricky Gervais and two other blokes you've never heard of, it's <laughs> fantastic. Yeah. And the question is, what was the famous name, the name of the famous comedian, uh, American Give out the number, give out the number. That produced uh, and had heavy production involvement in the film The Elephant Man. The email address is ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. Carl, what's the uh, phone number? 08700800 Right, next up, we've had a lot of requests. Carl's popularity is growing. They want to hear his, um, his super mega mix, uh, the Britney Spears thing. Big it up, big it up. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> <laughs> no, tell no, us what it is. It. All right, it's um, Mark B and Blade, the vocals of The Unknown over Britney Spears. Hit me, baby, one more time. Let's hear it. It's, it. it's highly illegal. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Go on then, back announce it, Carl. It's yours. Go on. That's uh, Mark being played there with a bootleg. And what's it called? You called it something, haven't you? You cleverly called it something. What did you call it? Um. <laughs> Nick this record one more time. Good. You Very good. Right? Carl Perkin Pilkinson there breaking all kinds of copyright rules. Now, coming up, we're going to be talking a little bit of feng shui, the art of 
moving things around so it's better. The ancient oriental art of rearranging your living room. Yeah, the, or <laughs> the ancient art of don't sit near a window. <laughs> exactly. Because you won't get any money for it. <laughs> And we've got a, we've got a book. Well, we've uh, been exploring Feng Shui for our yeah, amusement. Yeah, and uh, we're going to be reading some uh, great things. This is just uh, good. It's good, solid Feng Shui advice for us. I mean, what do we need to know? I mean, just keep those questions coming. Drive. If you've got any question for Carl, don't forget that's an ongoing thing. Anything in the world, any question, personal problems, philosophies, online, it can be out of the. Just ask Carl if you want. You know, just ask Carl. Okay. All right, Carl, you up for that, aren't you? Yeah. That's and right. you give your honest opinion, won't you? Always. Yeah. Yeah. Should we give away uh, donuts? Oh, we, is this what it's been won? Who's won it, Carl? Scott um, Hammond. Scott well, well done. Well done, Scott. He'll be loving that. He's, he's probably going to have a party, especially to play donuts. We've had uh, a number of right answers, but I'm afraid Scott's the winner. And the question, of course, was uh, which famous American comedian was heavily involved in the production of the film The Elephant Man? It was, of course, Mel Brooks. Surprising. And uh, he's got a company called Brooks Films. Our first uh, first person that called in. I think it was a bit confused. He said, is it testicle, testicles? Yeah. Yeah. When what? The producer went, testicles. Yeah. What was that illness years ago, <laughs> right? There was, um, a couple of lads at our school. Oh, yeah. Had really big heads. Right. And webbed fingers. <laughs> and webbed fingers? And Sorry, wait, wait, wait. Were that, hold on, did you find him in a pond? Did they used to be little tadpoles? No, Carl, so you're not see. confusing your past with an old episode no, of Doctor no. Who, are you? <laughs> What were they called, these two? The, oh, I, can't, I didn't mix with them. Right, uh, uh, right. It was just like... Of course it, not. Th there was a... Nobody thought anything of it at school. Cause no, it was like, sure. used to it. Like, <laughs> yeah! It was... It's the North. <laughs> there, there goes the creature from the Black Lagoon again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He he's is like, brilliant at trigonometry. He's late for double maths. Yeah. But, um... Yeah, I, I didn't think anything what of it. What is it called? What is the disease called where two fellas... Are they... Not even related. Rubbish! Uh, not related. This, uh, were you near a, a nuclear power station when you were growing up? Yeah. You weren't really? Yeah. God, this explains so much. This has got oh, a bit I don't heavy. Think that's it. Hey, talking of uh, enormous heads. Yeah. You were at the uh, the Pop Idol final, weren't you, Rick? You went yeah. in there. Just because obviously Rick's a huge fan of Pop Idol. He wanted to be there. He wanted yeah. to give his support. Quite seriously. There was no irony there. We were, yeah, we were he genuinely a is a fan of it. And um, he was. Uh, you, you, you sort of had photos taken with various people. Yeah, of course. Because you were a bit drunk and you wanted to have a yeah. memento of it. And it's obviously yeah. a picture of you with uh, fat man Rick Waller. Yeah. Um, yeah. But the best one is a picture of Ricky and his girlfriend with Dr. Fox, yeah. whose head <laughs> is twice is the size of mine. Of any other head. It's quite remarkable. I he's don't know how He's a lovely bloke, and he was really nice to meet him and everything. But in the and he's, he's got, he looks like an immaculate tan, and he's always happy, and he's, you know, he's It looks really on the picture, it looks like someone you might see in a carnival who's built a huge papier mache head. <laughs> and he's yeah. just, we're like Frank Sidebottom, <laughs> just sort of walking down the road. It's just incredible. Dr. Fox didn't used to go to your school, did he? He used to hang around with a mate. They were great swimmers. <laughs> they were brilliant swimmers. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Have we got another song lined up? Yeah, what yeah, are we going to play? Bit of Faro Monch. Bit of who? Faro Monch. Let's hear it. <laughs> <laughs> Farrah Munch, got ya, XFM 104.9. Well, as we promised, some Feng Shui. Um, what do you want to know? Ratio of witness. It's, a, it's a li one of those little books that you see at the sort of like the front desk of like Waterstones or Dylan's mm. or one of those. And it's just, uh, it's a little guide. It's, um, uh, should I say what it is? I'm allowed, yeah, I'm allowed, aren't I? Well. Lillian Two's little book of um, Feng Shui. And, uh, obviously, you can't go into it in depth, but it's some little. You know. Just some little sort of nuggets, I suppose. Yeah, ratio of windows. The ratio of windows to doors in your rooms should not exceed three to one. Too many windows calls all your luck to seep away. <laughs> Obviously. Hello. <laughs> uh, it is also better not to have windows on the wall opposite the door. Is that the case in your place, uh, Carl? Because you may need, may, you may need to brick that up when you get back later. <laughs> I always remember, um, I used to work nights. Yeah. Right? And it was when my brother just sort of got kicked out of the army. Yeah. I mean, mum and dad went away on holiday, so he was staying with us. <laughs> He's got to write a book, this bloke. And, you have um, got to write a book, Carl. Go I on. I came back, yeah. and there was women everywhere. There's women in every bed in the house. I thought, where am I going to sleep? Had he set up a brothel? What? <laughs> so, no, it's just a bit of a, bit of a womp. That's so, impressive, though, a girl in every single bed. I, I mean... He was mad. So, um, I slept on the sofa downstairs, mm. and I didn't sleep that well. Yeah. But I slept on it before when it was facing a different way. Sure. And I had a good sleep. <laughs> so for you, that's so proved the worth of Feng Shui. 
Yeah, I think there's something in it. <laughs> Did you honestly think there's something in it, though? Yeah, I do, yeah. Okay, we'll just read a few of the others, Rick. Okay, well, yeah. there's a... Just, oh, just, yeah, it's, it's, it's not... Be, I, think, I think most people know this one. Uh, display the three-legged frog for luck. Um, look for a three-legged frog. You can buy one from any Chinese supermarket <laughs> uh, and place it in the vicinity of your front door, facing inwards as if it has just come into the house. Don't place the frog facing the door! <laughs> Please. Oh, come on, people. What Think you, before you place your frog. I mean, this, this really is, I mean, but, but. What's the last page? Because that will be the most important one. Do you it? reckon? Yep. The last one, I, I, I uh, the well vase. Make a well vase and keep it hidden in your cupboard. It can be made of gold, crystal or glass. If, uh, can I just say something? If you've got a vase made of gold, you're probably all right for money anyway. <laughs> yep, yep, yeah, sure. Sure, sure. But this yeah. is the well vase. How do you make the well vase? Fill it with semi-precious stones and with soil taken from a rich man's garden. So just find the soil of a rich man. <laughs> Take some soil from the- <laughs> This is like bury a piece of steak and the wart will go. Yes. I, I, I have a uh, tooth of frog. This is- It's the one where with the gods. Can you find that one? Oh, where's that one? Yeah. Do you, do you, what do you, what do you make of Feng Shui, Carl? I is it something you believe in? Uh, well, like I said, I didn't sleep well on the sofa when it so was- So for you, that's proof, way. proof so positive. Yeah, you've got to get it right, haven't you? <laughs> Um, I'd like Carl to read this out. Okay. Yeah, do, do you mind? Read it out, just read it out loud. Which one? <laughs> yeah, the, the gods are here, right, right, okay. Just read that, that's in, such a, a good bit the of gods yeah. of wealth into your home. Yeah. The Chinese have several gods of wealth. Yeah. Which they display in their homes to attract, what? Prosperity. Prosperity. Oh, yeah. Yeah. My personal favourite is T.C.S.G. Yi. Yeah. Who sits on a tiger. He sits on a tiger? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Wait. It's pretty difficult to find this, this fella. Yeah. If you could use Kang Kung, or the three star gods, oh no. Wait. Read him out! Read out the names of the star gods. F-U-K. <laughs> read what, it out! Just read that, it's a, it's a, a Chinese god. god. You're allowed Chinese to say god. Chinese god no, on the radio. No. You are allowed to say well, but Chinese- you're allowed to say it, you say it then. Well, it, it you, look, it's, uh, you're so immature. Read the three of them out, really. Okay, um, if he is difficult to find, you should use Quan Kung. Or the three star gods, Fuck Luck and Sal, all of whom bring wealth and prosperity. Now, what were the names of the gods again? Because I just, I'm, if well, I'm making a note at home, Rick, well, it's, it's just, it's a Chinese god. Yeah, it's, there's Quang Kun, or you can use Luck Sal. Or <coughs> you can't. What? But it's a god, F-U-K, it's how, that's how it's Yeah, I assume, I don't know, if we're, if we're pronouncing it wrong, I really apologise. Apologies, apologies because because if, if we're offending anyone who's uh, of an oriental persuasion. But that's Quang Kun, or Luck Sal, or Fuck. And any of those gods are available at a Chinese supermarket. <laughs> Near you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's Feng Shui. It's an ancient art. You can't give me that look. No. Clinic, walking with thee. Um. So there. That's uh, Feng Shui. That's we've, Feng Shui sorted. We've given away donuts. We've talked a little bit about um, band names today. With a more insight into Carl's psyche. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now you, you, uh, during that record, you said, uh, ah, we knock everything. Mm. You saw something about the Bermuda Triangle, didn't you? That yeah, when I talked about ghosts, you sort of just, because uh, you don't believe in it. Mm. I, mean, I think it's because you're scared of it, to be honest, and you can't admit to, to understanding it and sure. actually believing in it. Sure. Thing on last night, Steve. Yes. The Bermuda Triangle. Oh, yeah. Do you know much about that? Um, mainly the, uh, song yeah. by, what was his name? What's his name? Bermuda, um, Bermuda Triangle, Triangle where people no, disappear. No, Bermuda the Triangle, what's his name? No, Barry Manilow. Barry, Barry Manilow. Yeah. You, are you familiar with the lyrics? Bermuda Triangle, where people disappear. Bermuda Triangle, don't go near. Yeah. I shouldn't really make a joke out of it. No, you're right, go on. But, um, what it is, Right, there's a programme saying what it what it's about. Do you, I mean, what do you know about it? Uh, as I say, mainly from what Barry's told me, but uh, certainly planes and various boats have gone missing within the Bermuda Triangle. Planes? Yeah. Yeah, but obviously that documentary didn't explore it. He, he, he learned a lot about that. For that. I, I learned a lot about American history through We Didn't Start the Fire by Billy Joel. Again, most so. of my knowledge of um, the uh, sort of you know, Tsarist Russia comes from uh, Rus Rasputin, Rasputin by um, Boney M. Well, yeah, he was the lover of the Russian Queen. They put you know, poison into his wine. Yeah, yeah. They shot him till he was dead. Yeah. Which is, you know, go on. Right. Well, this, oh, those right. Russians. Sort of a uh, bit of a bit of an earthquake in the sea. Sure. Let's out methane gas. Okay. Yeah. And apparently, if methane gas, if you were swimming out in the sea. Yeah. And there was like a, an earthquake and some methane came out. Yes. You can't swim in it, you just sink. Okay. 
even if you're a good swimmer. What, what, what happens if you're, you're, you're two lads from your school? And they ri- heads. Yeah, they, that, that's that's a that's like a buoy. Doesn't so you can see them a mile off, no, no, and no. their webbed hands would get them into shore. Because they did actually say, even if you're wearing a life jacket, if if the water's full of methane, right, you methane, just sink. You just sink. So what it's saying is, boats have gone across the sea, mm. got a load of methane in the sea, and the boat just sinks. Right. What about the planes? Is it then sort of planes with little sort of floaty things? Could on? be. That's that. That would be the sort they've landed in the sea. Right. <laughs> and methane's coming. Well, sorry, Carl. What did the documentary say? Not, not I imagine. Yeah, your hypothesis might be. Yeah. Wondering. What no, did they, they say in the documentary? They didn't cover did they, that bit. They didn't, didn't do cover the planes. They didn't do the planes. Something else they said about it though. Go on. Loch Ness, mm-hmm. the monster. Yep. Sure. Probably doesn't exist. Okay. What oh. it is? Interesting. Hold on. Interesting. <laughs> oh, interesting. Yeah. That, what they thought it the not this probably didn't exist. Curious viewpoint. Hold on. What, uh, what proof have they got for that, Carl? How can they go around saying stupid things like that? It's methane. Right. Again, in Loch Ness. And people have seen, um, what's the, what's the lake it's in? Loch Ness. Loch Ness. Yeah. Um. It being the Loch Ness monster. Yeah. yeah. That's so where it lives. That's how it finds its way home. That's certainly the clue. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if, 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 <laughs> again, Carl, yeah. that's the clue. Yeah, if you go, and it's, uh, if it's out uh, uh, wandering, it goes, excuse me, uh, would you know where, uh, I'm being the Loch Ness monster, where, where would I be gone? <laughs> oh, you'd be going to the Loch Ness if that's your home. It's a way over there, you so big anyway, monster, you. So the bubbles from the sure. methane. Mm. Bubble up out of the water, yeah. and people yeah. think, oh god, it's a monster's head. But it's mm. not, it's just water sort of shooting up because of the bubbles. Well, that's two of the great mysteries of the universe solved by Carl mm. P on a, on a Saturday afternoon. That is like fantastic. Yeah. So, that makes me, that makes me think a lot of things. So, you know, when mediums are sort of like going, oh, I've got something coming through. Mm. Do you think they are uh, exhaling a lot of methane gas? And thus, thus making them not think straight? Do you think everything's down to methane gas? Do you think that all the mysteries of the universe are down to methane gas, Carl? What did it say in the documentary you saw? About what? What was the budgie happy? We know that budgie was sad. Was it, was it in a room? Because they used to take canaries down the mines, didn't they? They used to take canaries down the mines, they'd smell the methane, and then the budgie would be happy. I'm not gonna teach you anymore. Play record. The long oh, and she, winding Should we introduce this, shouldn't I? Oh, it's Beatles, Long and Winding Road. Smooth. <laughs> Are we getting paid for this? Our Freaks Electric, Richard X and the Sugar Babes mm-hmm. on XFM 104.9. Well, nearly through, we've had a few laughs again, yep. a few tears. Absolutely, as always. Few, uh, uh, oh, excuse me, and I don't, don't be alarmed, I, I look quite frightening, but I'm uh, merely a, a nice monster. I seem to have lost my way home. Uh, could you direct me in the right direction? Ah, uh, nice to meet you, yeah, Carpill. Hi. Um, what's your name? W- why do you need to know my name? Well, it might help me to find out where you come from. Oh, my name's the Loch Ness Monster. Okay, alright, give me a second. Um, what was your name again? Loch Ness Monster. See, this is what I mean. <laughs> when you came in, you're all over me. <laughs> like a rash. Being nice to you. Yeah. <laughs> Gets towards the end. Nasty. It's the phone. Answer it. See who it is. Can you give us a second, uh, listeners? Just amuse yourselves for a moment. Yeah. We're who just is speaking it? to uh, Carl's just on the phone there, speaking to someone. Um, we'll just uh, keep you abreast of who that is. Uh, who is it? Time. It's uh, ten to three. Uh, wants to know if you're doing a live show somewhere tonight. So uh, just a uh, private call now. I'm um, asking Ricky. Uh, I am, yeah. Later. But I, Ricky, but course, I don't want to say it now. I'll, 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 well, I'll, well, uh, I'll David mind Brent one person in the now. hits it from the office and uh, often performs live at uh, different <laughs> venues <laughs> around <laughs> the yeah. country. Um, uh, okay. So while those two take care of business, <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys, have you finished that private call? Yes. <laughs> Jeez, that was outrageous. Um, you know you're a fan of Feng Shui, Carl, and you believe it's all true. <laughs> Um, I just, I just run this one past you just on the off chance. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, it may, maybe that you try to change your opinion slightly. Yeah. Feng Shui teaches you to use your environment wisely. Sure. If your land and the surrounding area is undulating, it's said to house auspicious dragons. <laughs> when land is flat and featureless, the dragon is missing and the land is said to be less auspicious. Excuse me, they call me the, uh, uh Brixton Dragon. Sure, sure. Uh, I seem to have lost my way. I, I know it's South London somewhere, but, uh, uh could you help me? Find my home. What's, it, what, 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 what's your name? Well, they call me the Brixton Dragon. Uh, right, where are you from? Uh, oh, I see what you mean. <laughs> oh. I uh, see what you mean, aye. Oh, the came So is that, does, that, does that make you query at all, the dragon? I'm the, not into the, it that much. Right, I'm sure. I'm just saying that if you have your head out, 
one end of the bed rather than the other, it might make a difference to your night's yeah. sleep. It's not so much yeah. feng shui though, is it? As sort of good advice, mm. generally. When you wake up, like, don't, don't don't sleep on the end of a spike near a cliff. Good advice. I mean, that, that's good advice, isn't it? You know what I mean? Yeah. When you went home and uh, the house was full of women, <laughs> why did you why did you sleep on the sofa? Why did you not pop upstairs and sort of <sighs> into a warm bed? Yeah, with a, with oh, a, with a woman. <laughs> 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 were, were they dressed or? Is your brother still sort of have those kind of parties, or? I haven't seen him for years. Sure, sure, sure. Where's oh, really? he living there? I don't know. Okay. What's, What's his name? Mark. <laughs> it's not. He's not. He's not known as like Moss Side Mark. Because that could be a clue. Ten <laughs> Dawlish Road Mark. He's never out of prison long enough to get a nickname. Hey, really? Steady on. It's getting a bit heavy, isn't it? God. Is this is this what's motivated a lot of your anxiety? Yeah. Oh, the hair we'll, loss, that sort of thing. We always go a little bit too far, don't we? A little bit dark at the end of the show. I know. Well, it's, um. Oh. Well, Do sorry about that. for Pete. Oh, Pete wanted a little bit of Muse. Yeah, if Pete wants it. I mean, I don't, I'm not a big fan. I don't mind Muse. I don't, I've still not got over them them doing that, um, Summertime song. What was it called? Nina Simone cover, wasn't it? Yeah. Anyway, listen, let's not bring the show down. Uh, no. Let's play Muse and then it's we'll be pretty much South Kensington. Yeah. Plug in, baby. Let's enjoy it. Star Sailor and Poor Misguided Fall. With me, Steve Merchant and... Carl Pilkington. The K-Man, round of applause for K-Man. Yeah. Uh, but no one's uh, announced who you are. Ricky Gervais. Ricky Gervais. It's XFM 104.9. Saturday afternoon. If you didn't know that, <laughs> I don't know why I mentioned it. That was stupid, really. You must know that by now. Well, we've got some great things coming up. We have indeed. We've got songs and chat and things. We'll also, of course, be um, running through the white van man questions from the sun again, but this time Carl will be answering them. I look forward to that. Yeah. Can we do that fairly soon? Oh. there's some good questions this week. Yeah, um, we will, but... Um, as I was coming in, there was a, like a bunch of um, posh lads, I think university students, trying to get in because they're doing one of those um, uh, scavenger hunts that they have to get points for charity and do stuff. And one of theirs is get on a live radio show. Right. So I sort of sort of felt sorry for them. So I've inv- I said they could come on here just for five minutes. Who are that's they? And right. um, they're just um, are they toffs? They are sort of like toffs, but they're trendy toffs. That's uh, obviously trendy toffs. I don't know yeah. what's that. Is that like L- Lady Victoria Hervey? Is she a <laughs> no, don't let me that. No, they they are both sort of like that um, Will of Pop Idol. Right, right, right. They like, right, like right. him, sort of like trendy but posh. Okay. They seem nice enough, and they're doing it. They do it for uh, a cancer charity, and um, uh, they just get they, they get got for what is it like? They got their sponsor to do very exactly. I don't know quite how it works, but they're gonna, they're going to come on and because um, we get the, for coming on this live radio show, they get seventeen thousand points. Right, good. If I can put that in context, yep. if they were to say, did it help deliver a baby, they'd only get 7,250 points. Well, but it's much easier. <laughs> it is. There's, yeah. lo- there's lots of women just Happily dropping sprogs posh, posh. all over the place. You can't get on a live radio show exactly. these days for exactly. love nor money. That's true enough. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, um, when are they coming in? Uh, uh, Carl what, said they're going to just... 1.30, I had a word with them. Okay, what did um, you make um, of them? They are posh. Really? But um, they said they're going to wander about and go and see if they can deliver a baby and that, and then come back here for one thirty. And uh, I don't know if it. Ca- how much, how much I hope they don't like leave a be- baby sort of half out. You know, if they've got, they've got it. You know, they push, push, push. Sorry, we're going to have to shoot off. We've got to yeah. go and see. We've got to play an instrument in a marching band <laughs> for eight thousand five hundred <laughs> points. Well, I did say be here definitely at one thirty because I don't want you getting in the way of the white van questions. Oh, sure. the other thing sure. is right. They get seven thousand five hundred points for delivering a baby, but they get. 9,000 points if they cut Peter Stringfellow's hair. Well, he's, you know, he's, he's very precious about his hair. It's a more delicate operation, <laughs> isn't it? There's more that can go wrong. That's true enough. Take an unconventional animal for a walk in a park. What an is an unconventional, unconventional animal? I think that could be a dog that just doesn't play by the rules. Yeah, that's a dog that's into Slipknot. <laughs> yeah, that, he's, that, that he wees in a urinal. Yeah, exactly. Standing up. Exactly. Yeah, well, I'm looking forward well, to yeah, that. I'm sure they're lovely guys. Good luck to them. Yeah, we'll see you later. Nirvana, Man Who Sold The World. Carl's all confused because it didn't tell you it was ended, did it? What is that then? Is that a sort of glitch in the computer? Just applause, isn't it? Okay, they it. might start swearing. You know what they're like. Yeah. Rock, star- <laughs> rock stars. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Their blue language. Yeah, and all their uh, habits and oh. all that. Yeah, I like it says track ending now. So Stop late, talking about it. That's in, that's, that you're giving away all the secrets of radio and that. People think it's like an old piece of vinyl that we've put on a needle, you know, like those old bits of footage of Tony Blackburn. That's what they think it's like. They don't realise there's computers doing it all. 
Yeah. Rick, you're, you're showing him behind the curtain. Never do that. I won't. I Never won't. do that, mate. Um, in the week, uh, I called Carl up. I said, how are you, mate? He went, not too bad. Uh, now, as you know, his girlfriend's been away for um, ages, hasn't she? Yeah. Covering the World Cup. The uh, African, African Nations. Nations Cup. She's a sports journalist. Well, yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. <laughs> I love the fact you're thinking, what does that mean? Like, well, she's not much of a journalist, Rick. To be honest. Oh. I've read some of her stuff. No, but she's not on air. She does stuff, you know. Yeah. Behind the scenes. Yeah. Sure, yeah. sure, sure. A lot of journalists do. You, you, you always want to make clear that you're not going out with Kate Aidy. That's what you want to make clear, isn't it? Yeah. Um, now, so she she's seen none of the, the meteoric rise of Carl as right, a broadcaster. Right, she's been away for the whole time a since you've sort of become... A raconteur, yeah. a wit, yeah. um, a cult figure, That's to be right. honest. And he hadn't, he hadn't told her this. So, uh, <laughs> apparently he went home and she was sitting there, looking a bit grumpy, he went, all right, so yeah. She went, should we go out then? He went, she went, I'm not sure I want to go out with an idiot. Right? Oh no! Yeah, because and she went Loch Ness monster. Why don't you just think? Of course, the Loch Ness monster lives in Loch Ness, and she was giving a bit of a hard time. And she went, "That's why I don't." He said, "That's why I I didn't tell her. I, you know, I didn't tell her really." Same thing happened when I was at school and I had to play drums in Little Donkey. <laughs> I didn't tell my parents, right? <laughs> but my dad turned up anyway. And what happened? He um. How old were you, Carl? Well, it was it was the school that I used to go to. Oh yeah. Like, oh yeah. So oh yeah. You went. Well, you used to go to the school you used to go to. <laughs> no, but what I mean go is, on. I didn't go to secondary, did I? So I missed a lot of that. Sure. But primary, I liked. Oh. It was okay. all colouring in and stuff. Yep. And um, <laughs> it was a Christmas play, and I managed to get a part in it. And, um, did you audition? No. Um, got a part in it, and I should have been playing the drums to uh, the one about kings. The three. We three kings. Yeah. Yep. I was meant to, meant to be doing that, but little donkey. Came on, and it was one of those. What do you mean came on? That was like next up on on you know the la the the next song. Right, right. And it's one of them songs that you can't help sort of tapping along to. Yeah, do you know like um like if I if I was to go um yeah you'd have to finish it with yeah do you know that they actually send that into space? Do they? And what hoping the aliens will respond with that? Yeah. They do do that because apparently it's it it is one of the things that you can't help. <laughs> what even if you're an alien life form? Yeah, they, they know that, do they? Yeah. But anyway, what can they watch Star Trek or something? No, do do knock knock. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, seriously. <laughs> who's, 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 like, if you say no, knock knock into yeah. space, yeah, they have to say. Oggy oggy oggy. Ah, that is that is great. Seriously. No. Oh, hold on, what's something out there? What's a little green fellow? <laughs> that is great. Yeah, so anyway, that is little, donkey, little Donkey is like one of them tunes that you can't... And I was there and he had the drumstick and I thought, oh, God. The I, drumstick! I could feel myself. And anyway, Just wanting to do it, yeah. I started going along and playing Little Donkey, which I wasn't meant to do, but it went down such a storm. <laughs> What, were there people like parents and that dozing off and then suddenly they heard your version of Little Donkey and they thought, wait a minute, now it's really picking up. What do you mean I'm glad we paid a pound fifty for this. What do you mean it went down such a storm? I'm going, hold on, is it, was it like when people Ringo... People in the air. It like when Ringo joined the Beatles and they were going, yeah. boo, Pete Best, but he went... <laughs> yeah, they like, went, whoa! whoa. <laughs> oh, God. No, but the teacher just said, oh, it went down really well, you can do that again tonight. Right. When you're in it again. But anyway, so my dad was there. And, um, and you hadn't told him about this performance, no, so he just did. turned up I off his own back. I never took the light of home and stuff to no. you know, show my mum and dad, because it just put me off. So, um, anyway, he turned up, don't know why, he must have heard from someone else's dad. Yeah. He turned up, and um, he, he swore about me, which... Did I, he? I, I don't... Can you, what, could you, f could you do use you a, a word that... Is allowed to be said, the word? Of course it is. Right. If you've if you got a kid in the car or anything, you can turn it down now. Oh, yeah. Right? But he said... Um, it, it was a guy stood next to him with a camera, big video camera filming it, and he said, yeah, film it, but try and avoid getting the twat in the hat in the shot, because I had one of those porters, you know, the little round pork pie hats on. Right. This is so what, sad. What, was this a nativity play? It was about Jesus and stuff. Yeah, well, there was a porter there helping with his bags. Of course there was, I forgot. I yeah. mean, Mary and well, Joseph, the they got there. Yeah, yeah, because sure. it was the whole, you know, because the, the inn was full. Yes. But I think the porter doubled up with the inn and the stable. Right, that was nice. So he, yeah, he yeah. carry bags over, yeah. Yeah, no, so you, yeah, yeah. You're right, though. I don't know why I was <laughs> wearing one of them. But I was. And, um... And your father said that? And how did you know your father said that? Did you hear it? He told me about it later. Oh, he told you about it later? Yeah, I was talking about stuff I'd done at school, and he said, oh, God, remember that, that. And he... I spoke to him the other day about it. Right. And, uh... Yeah, oh, God. Shame. 
So that was, that was the end of your sort of drumming career, really? Because it could have been, yeah. I mean, you know, the audience loved it the night before. Yeah. <laughs> you could have, like, been, like, who knows, a whole new world for you. Yeah. Have you done any stuff? I never drummed. I've never drummed. I wish I had. Man. I wish but, I had. uh, that is, that is, That's uh, a movie story, but... Is that, and that's why you don't, and you don't tell, you still, your mum and dad don't know you on the no, radio, they do they? I think, when they were down the other weekend, they had to come in, and I just said, oh, I'll just go in and press the buttons. Because they could listen on Sky Digital, couldn't they? They could do. But you wouldn't want that, would I, you? I don't want that. No. Play Carl. a record, and I'll talk to you again a little bit about this later. Yep. Right. Six an hour. Princess Superstar, Bad Babysitter, first played on this show by Steve Merchant, by Bad Steve Merchant. That's true enough. By, by Steve Scratch Merchant. That's I right. mean, I, I still like that, but the videos put me off it a little bit, because it's just, it makes it into the novelty record it always had the potential of being, do you I know agree, what I mean? I agree, I agree. Although I, I was never a big fan of Babysitter, Bad Babysitter was not uh, my, my favourite from the album. Sure. Uh, sure. If people want my interest and in my views on hip hop, then they can always email in Rick, of course. Or, or call you at home. Just give, <laughs> give me a ring at home, it's no problem. <laughs> yeah. Um, or I just pop out and you know, hang with them in yeah. the hood. Yeah, sure, you know, sure, so, sure. Um, yeah. Now it's time for White Van Man. White Van Man. Um, <clears throat> yes, for those, that, uh, those yeah. that don't buy the sun, they think it's beneath them. <laughs> um, White Van Man is a column they have, I think, every day, actually, and they just get sort of some, you know, Joe Public to kind of comment sure. on the week's news. It just seems to me, uh, you know, that it might be interesting to uh, to get Carl's views yeah. on some of the big not, events. Not because we, we think that Carl hasn't got a valid sort of viewpoint, no. because Carl sees the world differently to some people, that's all, and that's, that's what's interesting, you know, like an artist does, or a... Exactly, yeah, he's a, very bohemian in his outlook. Yeah. Do, you, uh, do you feel that you're up to scratch on this week's news? I don't like this, but... Don't you? Don't, just relax. Why not? Really? It's pressure. No, 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 because you just have to give us your first opinion. For, for your honest answer, that's all we've ever asked of you, Carl, and it's all you've ever given us. Your honest, your first from the heart <laughs> view, yeah? All Don't right. worry, just relax. Don't just chill in. Are you worried that people are listening and thinking you're an idiot? If my girlfriend's listening now, go and have a wash or something. <laughs> go and have a wash <laughs> Not or something. very nice, is it? <laughs> <laughs> is it the opposite of Napoleon and Josephine? <laughs> Yeah, go on, go on. If, if you're going to visit me again, Josephine, for Christ's sake, what? Well, I'll ease yeah. you in with something fairly easy, a, a music-based question. Um, Kylie Minogue versus Dido as Queen of the Brits. What's your view there? Um, <laughs> go and have a wash. It doesn't really matter, does it? Um, it doesn't really matter. What doesn't really matter? <laughs> with the Brits. I was watching it the other night, and um, I think Kylie will be a good-looking old woman. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Oh. Do you know? Do you ever do that? Oh. Sort of I want to, Steve. I want to celebrate with you every time we open this match. Doesn't matter. I want us to open a bottle of champagne. I know what you mean. Do you know um, what I mean? It's yeah. like we did that. Yes. No. Do you, do you, do you ever do that though? Look at people and uh, another person who springs to mind, Jenny Powell. I, <laughs> I don't think she's that good looking now. Who's Jenny Powell? Is she that girl that used to be the si the assistant on Wheel of Fortune? Yeah. Yeah. Leslie? Yeah. I think she's a bit over the top for a young woman, but when right. she gets older, I think she'll look. Be nice. a bit of a stunner. Mm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So for you, Kylie, you know, whereas you don't feel that about Dido, is that right? She's all right. She's normal. I prefer Kylie's sister to Kylie. She okay. Looks, you know, she, I can imagine her being a hard work to live with. And Who, Kylie? Not right. doing washing up and that. Right, know, sure. Being a bit <laughs> right, <next> okay. <laughs> and what do you make of uh, taxes rising in the next budget to pay for NHS improvements? Well, my dad went to hospital to have an operation once. Yeah. So I feel like... It's worth paying it because I've, yeah. I've got some. Because people, because people might go to have to go to hospital. Yeah, yeah. But it makes a change when it's someone in your family, doesn't it? Yeah. Because you sort of realise. Yeah, a change is as good as a rest. And the weird thing is, if you want for me, Dad, I wouldn't be here doing this show because when he was in hospital. Well, no, I'll stop you there. <laughs> yeah. To be honest, that, that's <laughs> all you need to know. You, you wouldn't be here, true, but no, but well, no, no, because this was after I was born, so I would be here. <laughs> but but so, for his more direct involvement was what? Yeah, because when when my mum was seeing me, Dad. In yep. the hospital, I got a bit bored, <laughs> went for a wander, found the hospital radio station, yeah, and got a gig. Really? So, in in a, in a real sense, if it wasn't for Carl's dad, Carl wouldn't be here. And did your dad, like, while he was listening to you, did he like sort of tap the nurse and go, "Can you get that twelve off the air?" <laughs> 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 Who's put him in that? App? Yeah. Oh, uh, okay. Um, what do you make of the real-life Mowgli who's surviving in a Transylvanian countryside? Apparently, I don't know much about this story. I don't you, know. What, you know Mowgli, he's the guy from the one, Jungle Book. Yeah. The little kid that grew up um, with bears and animals and stuff. Apparently there's a real-life one in Transylvania. What, what were the things in Gremlins? <laughs> what were the what? 
The, in Gremlins, they were. Well, wait, 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 wait. Okay, this is an example. This is what your girlfriend said. Think. What were the things in Gremlins called? I can't remember. Just, I mean, There's really. Something like that, isn't it? No, no, wait, 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 wait. Just really, really think now, Carl. Just with all, with everything you've ever, with all the brain power you've ever used, think what the things in Gremlins were called. It's not there. There's a clue here. Oh no. Yeah. They're not. What? Gremlins. Yeah. Play a record, Carl. Oh. <laughs> This is XFM. Well, we're back, and there's a few more people here. It's <laughs> absolutely well done. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, well observed. Yeah. Do you want to say hello? Yeah, hi guys. Hi guys. <laughs> and what are you doing here? Uh, we're. This is uh, Mark and James, or Sko and Belch, and we're here. Sorry, your names are what? Sorry, <laughs> say the last <laughs> bit again. Or what? Sko, Sko and Belch. Sko and Belch. Yeah, that's right. Do you Sko. want to explain that? Um, no. No. <laughs> from the Long drinking story. games, I imagine. Yeah. Oh. We've got worse names than that, but it's radio, so. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> now you're, you're presumably um, students. Uh, we've, we've just we've just gra well we kind of graduated. When we've been in work for like about a year or two. And what yeah. do you do? Um, I work for a management consultancy. I work for a distribution company up in Birmingham. Well, okay. So now, you, what you're doing is a scavenger hunt and you're raising for um, uh, a cancer um, charity. Cancer research. Right, yeah. and you've got to do... And this is... We're, we're just helping you out here because for 17,000 points, you have to get live on a TV or radio show. That's exactly it. So and here we are. That's why we're here. Yeah. Do, and you, have you, do you ever listen to XFM? Uh, I know of it, yeah. I, I listened to it a few times. Sure. What kind of music, what kind of sounds would you normally be into? Uh, oh, I love stuff. cheesy radio, sort of school disco, sort of, you know, 80s right, sure, stuff. Sure, sure. Sorry, what was your name again? Mark, or Sko. Sko, Sko. Okay. <laughs> and you're? Belch. Belch. Um, and what sort of sounds would you be uh, grooving to, Belch? Uh, cheesy. UK Garage? Che when, uh, well, Craig David. A, 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 bit of, a bit of house, just very occasionally, sure. a bit of cheese. It depends what kind of mood I'm in, you yeah. know. Um, yeah, now, yeah. You, you don't listen much, but you, you, you I mean, kiss a celeb, because Carl... Yeah, we actually wanted to do that with you, Ricky, is that mm, right? No. Can that's not, not going to happen okay. with Ricky, but so you know Carl's now got his name mentioned in Heat magazine. Is that right? Well, so that's you, if brilliant. If you want to snog Carl, we'd love to see that. I mean, we don't want to <laughs> snog Carl, but I mean, we were thinking if there was kind of a female placenta here, we might be able to do something. But um, what are you saying? A female, <laughs> a female placenta. Well, if you've got one. Have you seen some <laughs> of the female presenters that work on XFM? Oh, presenter. Is that why they're on radio? I thought Quite. you said placenta. Um, <laughs> that's uh, unlikely. I know. Um, <laughs> Well, now, what's the other things you've got to do here? So, what, what are some of the things you've done already? Well, See, we, some of these worry me, like start a fire in Pudding Lane. Oh, we've for, done that already. For 4,700 points. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what we have done. We've been, on, we've been on Phantom of the Opera stage already. Have we? you? Yeah, we, we just asked the stage door guy. Sure. And, that wasn't um, during the show, I see. No. And that's right, we ought to, we, he, actually, he actually mentioned that yeah, we shouldn't speak about that too. Okay. <laughs> Otherwise, he'll <laughs> get sacked. Well. Well. Exact. <laughs> but, um, yeah, he was really kind to let us on. Um, we've jumped in Trafalgar Square Water with... Doing a sort of friends impersonation, so that was right. Yeah, How many points did you get for that? We got two thousand points for that. We got right. eight thousand points for being on the um, stage at, the, at Phantom of the Opera, yeah. and we get double that. We get like eighteen thousand points, which is almost the maximum for being here right now. Really, so that's yeah, absolutely well, great. I, I'll say I wouldn't worry about the little things. I'd go for the big. The yeah, big that's it. We're here. not. We're, 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 not, we're not interested in the little stuff. We want to go for the big stuff. Yeah. So what were the big ones? Are uh, get on stage with S Club Seven. That's not going to happen, is it? When, when have you got till till six today? Well, yeah. S Club Seven are on at the London Arena uh, at about two o'clock. So good luck. But okay. we, we, I, I think it's going to be very very difficult to get on there. But I, I, I know. think so. Yeah, get in the vaults of a bank. Yeah, you see, some, of these, some of these are bordering on the illegal. That's twenty thousand points for that. <laughs> have you um, seen like that? like get in a cage at London Zoo. Don't do that. <laughs> I mean, just 10,000 points, but don't do it. Unless it's a penguin cage. <laughs> well, that's what we're hoping. Just some kind of air, timid animal we might be all right with. You know? Yeah, sure. If anyone's got any good ideas for sort of funky things to do on air, then... Um, okay, well, if you, if, you leave, if you leave your number and anyone calls in, they can help you with anything. Well, maybe, maybe some of S Club 7 yeah. are listening. Or <laughs> if, if, it's it's or I mean, we love if, them to bits. If they are, it, it's, it's for charity, and the, the points get awarded into money for colon cancer research. So it'd be absolutely fantastic if we could. Yeah, so Bradley, John... Tina, if you're listening. Yeah, if you're listening. Or any celebrity out there who's a female celebrity, we need to we need to snog them. It doesn't oh, need to be a long snog, yeah, if we can, that'd be this great. Is, this is good for 7,000 points. This looks like a good one. Um, play the organ in a church. That must be easy. Is that a metaphor? Yeah, but the, you know what church would like. <laughs> it says the bigger the better, so it might be. That's got to be euphemism. <laughs> yeah, it's got to be, hasn't it? Yeah. Uh, well, thanks very much. Good luck. Good luck, guys. Guys, yeah, thanks very much. Thank you very much. Standing outside Lemmy's looking Miz. That's going to happen. That's good. Man, so, a big gun type thing on the HMS Belfast. 
That well, we've got a big gun. It's just finding the boat, which is the problem. Oh, see. calm down. What was your name? Bo? Po? No. Po? Sco. 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 <laughs> Thanks very much. Cheers. 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 Bye. The streets. Let's push things forward on XFM 104.9, the home of charity. <laughs> That's true enough. Yeah. I've got to slow down because I'm doing a little bit too much for charity. I've got to, I've got to worry about myself sooner or later. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? No, come on. We were halfway through uh, White Van Man. We were indeed, yes. Those, those, um, those lads came in. Getting Carl's views on some of the big stories of the week yeah. from the news. Um, Carl, what do you make of the fact that the British Olympic curling team won a gold medal? I watched it. Uh-huh. I thought it was really good. Um, <laughs> the only thing that's getting on my nerves now... Is like, what was that? Is that a trombone player <laughs> just sneaked in? <laughs> that was me moving this microphone. Right. That was incredible, sorry. wasn't it? Yeah. What an right. amazing um, noise. The only thing is... <laughs> that shouldn't sound like that, should it? That's incredible. What a shoddy tin pot station this is. Well, we know that. Sorry, Carl. Go on. It's like, in all the papers now, in, in like the, you know, the Star and the Sun all week, they've been like traipsing models over a bit of granite. Do you know like how those things are made out of granite? The, um, the things they throw. Oh yeah, and it just that that bit annoys me. Okay, the what, way that the Daily Star. <laughs> no, the way that you know this sport, nobody had ever sort of heard of it a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, yeah, sure. We win a gold mar- medal. Yeah, and now in the papers it's like they've gone crazy. They've gone curling mad. It. Yeah, it's a good game now. Yeah, good. Okay, next. All right, good. Uh, let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Uh, what about the fact that the world's tallest man is living in a semi in Neeston? Uh. It's all right, isn't it? Um, <laughs> something that someone told me in the week is that, do you know all these tall people like this guy? Yeah. Which is a bit weird they've only just found him, considering he's the tallest man. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a bit weird. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> someone <laughs> oh, someone told me that, um, <laughs> uh, do you know the guy who was in James Bond, the big bloke? Yes. Jaws. Jaws. He's got the same illness as this bloke. Right. And what it is... It's called it's, tall. It's something about... You're suffering from tall. You've got a, a small tumour or something just behind this part of your head. Yes. Oh, yeah. Just, just sort of in, in the middle of your eyes. Yeah. And, and the pressure on that makes you grow really tall or something. Yeah. So he needs to get it sorted. <laughs> That's your advice to him. Yeah. Get it sorted. Okay, very finally, uh, Carl, this is important. This is um, just projecting <laughs> into the future. Get it sorted. Just projecting into the future now, K-Man. <laughs> Apparently, global warming will bring sizzling summers and weird wildlife to Great Britain in the future. Are you worried about that? Um, how soon? Soon enough for you to worry. Yeah, it's pretty worrying. Okay. Um, you don't. You wouldn't prefer it to be sunny here all the time? No, because with hot weather comes weird spiders and that. See, I always think we're quite lucky here. Yeah. If you live in Australia, you might have the sun and stuff, but you've got like deadly snakes. Yes. Yeah. Which are death. Did you know snakes are deaf? Snakes are deaf? They don't have ears. Okay. Um, so you're all right walking about behind them. Yep. But, but if they see you ahead of you, you know. you're in trouble. But yeah, with, with places like Australia, you know, people go, oh, it's great, it's sunny, but they don't talk about the spiders and... They keep the spiders... The lizards yeah. and stuff. So I think we've got a bit of the, both the best worlds. So you're worried, though, about in the future, the vultures flying through the sky, we've got various creepy crawly snakes. You yeah. concerned about that? Yeah, well, there's a load. I saw something in the news in the week that a load of sparrows or something was somewhere. Maybe that's the start. <laughs> that's an interesting story. <laughs> no. Was that front page or? <laughs> <laughs> there's a load of sparrows somewhere. No, <laughs> Read all about it. Sparrows somewhere. Some sparrows somewhere. Sparrows somewhere. <laughs> load of sparrows somewhere. Sparrows no. somewhere. <laughs> there you go. Anyway. Excellent. That's Thank great. You very that's much, that, Carl. that's uh, that's Carl um, giving his views on the news. Don't do that next week. <laughs> Why not? I just, I just don't like it. Why? Pressure. It's not pressure, you did brilliantly. Yeah. Lost Profits there on XFM 104.9. Now I like that. Mm-hmm. It rocks. I like the guitar. Atmosphere. It's good. 
But it's called the fake sound of progress. I know, I know. What See, else? what always annoys me is when people, um, they dismiss, you know, say Enrique Iglesias, current number one, great song. Good video. Brilliant video. And they say, oh, it's rubbish and all that. But I think that songs with titles like a fake sound of progress. Yeah. Much more something to get on your hobby horse about. What has happened in that Bad video? lyrics by if, good artists is always worse than if I If you're think listening, song. or if you work for the record company, or you worked on that video, because he's got the money and the girl, and then Mickey Rourke beats him up, right, he has a fight, you just see him knock him over, and then it cuts, and the next scene, it's night, it's not in the desert, there's loads of, um, uh, police cars, they're not doing anything. They're, they're just standing and around. And somehow he's... Probably got, eating he's, donuts. He's dying of injuries, but I don't know what happened. They don't... What has happened in that video? I, I think if you heard the 12-inch mix, <laughs> there's a whole bunch of other uh, sequences that explain why. Yeah, happened. I mean, we all think also we think that he stole the girl off Mickey. I Rourke think he stole the girl off Mickey Rourke, yeah. as well as some money. Some money, Mi yeah. Mickey's tracked him down. Yeah. And he's thinking, I'm going to stop running. I'm going to face Mickey this time. And he does, and then boom, you're right. It cuts, and suddenly the police have, yeah. have shot him or something. I don't know where somewhere. they are. Don't know. What, the, the police seem to be leaving him to die in the. See, I thought I thought that they'd called the police because the, the the sort of like the melee. Mm. But Mickey walks off with his gang, the police are going, well, you know, where are they? There's no evidence. And they go, well, look, he's dying. They're going, but how did he die? Yeah. How is he dying? He's, he's not, he's a bit wet for the moment. No, no, in Rourke, though, Rick, I imagine he's, uh, stitched Enrique up. I bet he's framed him or something. Or, or he's, he's, he's no sort of, like, ninja stuff, and there's lots of internal injuries that yeah. aren't immediately Anyone, visible. if you were involved with perhaps the making of that video, or indeed you are, Enrique Iglesias, give yeah. us a ring. If you're around. Come on. Just, just fill us in. I, I need, I, um... I'd rather play some adverts now than I'd, love, I'd love to play some adverts, Rick, but I'll tell you this. I'd also like to tell the listeners that coming very soon on XFM, some huge news about Carl is. that will rock It'd the capital. It'll be like Pop Idol. It's going to be an ongoing saga. <laughs> Go, man. Shot, shot. Good track. Good band. But I'll tell you what, in the second hour, I just want to play classics. I'd love to hear a bloody I want to play some it. Cure, New Order, Smith. Sure. Do you know what I mean? Mm, mm, Some, mm, you know, we mm. played Nirvana earlier, but it's not enough for me, Steve. No, you need I your fix. I want. <laughs> I do. Well, uh, it's that point in the show now. Song for the lovers. Mm -hmm. uh, one of my favourite singers. What probably one of the most beautiful singer songwriters of all time. Well, you don't mean that. Like, you don't mean that he's a good-looking bloke and you fancy him. <laughs> I mean, I just want to clear that up, Rick, because otherwise, <laughs> that would. Yeah. What you uh, mean is that the songs he writes are beautiful. Yeah. You can take or leave him as a bloke, can't Yeah, of course, of course, yeah. He's And I've got, I've got, and, and he's, he's written, mo he's written such brilliant classics with his lovely ass as, oh, <laughs> why did I say that? Why did you say that, did you say that for, Rick? Because if people will that? listen and misinterpret. Oh, God. Um, uh, he wrote Galveston, he wrote Wichita Line Man, he wrote, um, the yeah, he wrote MacArthur Park, and just to tickle him down below, what? What? I don't know Are what. you saying Thieves. <laughs> and this is, uh, a song. One of the most beautiful songs I've ever heard. It's off, um, a few of them, Ten Easy Pieces, which is just him doing the versions, um, of other, you know, that he gave to other people on piano. And this is, um, called If These Old Walls Could Speak. And it is absolutely beautiful. Listen to this. If These Old Walls Could Speak by Jimmy Webb. Might play another track off that later if we've got time. What today? Yeah, well, maybe or maybe next week. We've got yeah, we've got lots right. to pack in. We've got things like New Order, Cure. Oh, I'm just the... hoping that um, all those kind of new metal fans, Rick, can just calm down for a second, you know, and, yeah, and, and just enjoy that for what it was. Yeah, well, like they're not. Know, I hope their snobbery is not going to uh, prevent them from enjoying. I it. hope they can just leave it alone for two hours for our show. Because exactly. We try and you know we get try and pack lots of. Well, whilst stuff you're in. talking about new metal, can I just say Ian Camfield is here tonight. He's what? moving from Fridays. Right. What the hell does he think he's doing? He's what? just offering up information, no? No, it's just like you were talking about the new Matlers, and now it seems like a good time to Carl, say... Carl, listen. You're here for our amusement. Yeah. You don't... You don't sort of come in any time you want. When we decide it's time to sort of have some fun at your expense, then we'll let you know, but yeah. otherwise... This is, we're not here to help other DJs, or, or, or even this station. We don't give a f about this... See, this is what my girlfriend said. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> we should listen to her. She knows she what she's talking about, just, clearly. Now, put your microphone down. She said, they just wheel you out when they need you. Switch your microphone off, Carl, and let us finish what we were saying. <laughs> right, just... What yeah. were we saying, Rick? Um, uh, Ian Canfield has got a rock show. Oh, right, yeah. Starting today. It's four hours of pure rock. rock. Yeah, he's probably here smoking, drinking Jack Daniels, and just, like, having pictures of Vance put up around him <laughs> to get in the mood. Then he'd go out and rock. <laughs> Carl, don't be silly. Turn your microphone on. We're joking. It was, uh, it was, is that right? When's he on? 
8 till 12 tonight, four hours of rock. Lovely. Listen, um, some big classics coming up, plus oh, huge no, no, news some ads. about oh, no, Carl. Please, let's play some more ads. Do you really want some ads? I'm tired of the music and chat. Please play some more ads, Carl. Please. Oh, Carl. Christ's sake. Cure on XFM 104.9. That's what it's all about, Steve. Absolutely. Classics. Yeah, we've got some more classics coming up. Looking forward to them. Now, when we were talking to Carl in the week, the thing we're talking to Carl is that you come up with something that's sort of like, um, quite innocent, and he goes, ah, well, the once, right? And you realise that it's comedy dynamite. Yeah. He doesn't know it, but we want to go save it. And he let out, um, you were filling in a form, weren't you? It's, it's all like your girlfriend thinking you're a div. And it's happened before, isn't it? Because she came home and you'd filled out a form to get a job once, hadn't you? Yeah. What was that for? Granada Telly. And on it... Well, uh, let Carl explain. Yeah. Um, you, you, you see, this is what annoys me with job applications, because rather than just saying, do you want the job and what can you bring to this business? Yeah. Do you want the job is a good one. Because yeah. the thing is... <laughs> that, 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 that's what I'm listen, for the boys. No, listen, right? Because if they say no, yeah, I don't think they want the job. Yeah, but... Listen. Go on. I mean, I presume with what you do, you, you have to take people on and stuff. Well, in a fight, you mean? You know what I mean? Yeah. And I think it's more important that you're willing to graft and put the hours in. Sure. Than say that, you know, you've, you did well at school. Yes, sure. Because if I wanted to, I could have done well at school. Of course. I just, I just didn't want to. Yeah. So where's this going? So you had the application form. So when it came to the qualifications bit and that, I couldn't fill them in because I didn't have my qualifications. And it was also asking about your languages. And uh, I put down English quite good. English quite good. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha <laughs> And his girlfriend Freak. came over and seen the form that he'd sent off. This was a copy, copy of it. Yeah. And so she went, oh, you know what I mean? So that's what started, you know, the disappointment. So they're going to get that and think that you're not English. I don't think I've got it. It was ages ago. <laughs> right. <laughs> How long ago was it? Oh, well, it was when I was still in Manchester, so... Five years ago. I don't think you've got it, no. <laughs> um, no, th th yeah, no, I think you'd... There yeah. could be a long list. I mean, th th there's probably a lot of admin problems in that organisation, but they probably... But what, prob what I meant by it is that, me Eng you know, I can speak English, but I don't know all these long words that people use all the time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. God. Oh, can I just tell this quickly? Um, it, in the week, um, I'm talking to you now, the listener. Um, usually I don't. Yeah. Uh, Carl said, oh... I'm, about embarrassing him on air and that, and he's worried about his education, and he was worried about not knowing long words, like we come up with any long words. Mm. And he said, and I, I was I was scared um, you were going to ask me something about um, someone, and he's an uh, Eastern European leader, his surname is Milosevic, and Carl said, so I learnt it this week, and learnt it so you can't catch me out in case you say, I said, what? And he said, he thought about it, and he went, Flobberdam Milosevic. <laughs> Got a surname right though, didn't it? So what's, what's his name? Right? What's his name? That's how Bill and Ben would address this leader. How would they have said it? Flobberdam Milosevic. What's his name? Slobberdam yeah. Milosevic. Yeah. Well done. well done. Anyway, Carl, look, you almost let it slip then as you were talking about your uh, filling out that application form. There's some big news that everyone needs to know, which we were stunned by in the week. Although the more we sort of talk to you, the more it starts to fall into place. Yeah. But Carl, what's the story? That I haven't got me. Uh... My exam results from the GCSEs. He never turned up to get his exam results. I was working. And so, how many did you take in the end? Because you weren't even sure about that, were you? You think you took maths and English, don't you? Yeah. And you, you think you've handed in the artwork for art, don't now, you? Now, art was um, continual assessment, wasn't it? Yeah. Coursework. And what was the that you, had, you made? I made a man s sort of putting his arms into a car. You've, you've made a model of a man putting his arms into a car. What was this? So that like, one's passed. Was that, this, that, that this is a homage to break-ins in Manchester? <laughs> was this? <laughs> <laughs> was this? <laughs> oh look, he does what he sees. Yeah. Um, so, so you've got that. That's safe. You so, definitely got that one. So you've taken mm -hmm. art, you've taken English and maths, you think. So this is what we're going to do, listeners. We're going to try and find out his exam results for him and tell him next week. Live on air. We're going to call his school, we're going to try and track him down, and we are going to have a little envelope, and we are going to give Carl, at the age of 29, his O-level results. Uh, GCSEs. GCSEs, yeah. Now, Carl, so you took maths, yep. you think, you took English, you took, do you remember turning up to do those? Do you remember sitting in the room, filling in the forms? Yeah. Okay, and how did you feel you did? <laughs> I didn't, I don't think I did well. You don't think you did well? Did you revise? No. Why didn't you revise? Because I, I don't really believe in it. <laughs> okay. Well, it's just that if you don't know it, then you don't know it. You shouldn't have to start looking at the book. If I went to the doc, if I went to like the hospital, yeah, 
and the doctor said, oh, you need your appendix out, but hang on a minute, I've just got to read up on it. Yeah. That isn't good enough. Okay. He should know, and that's that's the way I feel about it. To be it. fair, though, he did do the revision beforehand. Yeah. They don't usually pass on, uh, like, maybe, like, when they're in practice. Yeah, the information they the took line. in by osmosis. Yeah, yeah, and they, the bloke comes in and goes, can I just see what you did with that? And he goes, you've passed. Yeah. Phew. That's a good one. Yeah. Yeah. Good job I watched Casualty. <laughs> I just like the way, you know, the things that interest me, I remember. Things okay. like snakes not having ears and stuff. Yes. I didn't have to read about that. No, you just learnt that. Yeah. You saw it on the telly, didn't you? You saw yeah. it on that Ian Wright programme. Yeah. Yeah. And this is what Carl said to me. He said, uh, only, no, it's actually, um, I, I called Carl up in the week and Reese was with him. You know, Reese used to be on XFM yeah. and he yeah. took the phone and he went, Carl's worried after seeing that programme. He said, snakes don't have ears, right? He said, so you can creep up on them and pick them up. And he said, Carl's worried. He said, how would you ever put them down again? <laughs> Because then they know that you're there. I woke up the other night, quite late. Worried about that. And I said to my girlfriend, I said, how do you put a snake down? And she said, what are you talking about? I said, that Ian Wright thing, this guy managed to pick up a snake. And do you know that thing where they clamp its head on a jar to get the poison out? <laughs> I do know. Right? <laughs> they did that, but they didn't show you how they got rid of it. And I thought, it could really get nasty. Because it's obviously annoyed that you've had its head pressed in the jar. Yeah. yeah right? They hate that. Now... It's you, especially as it's in front of their mates. When you lift it off, yeah. right, you've got hold of it. Yeah. If you go to chuck it down, <laughs> it's going to turn on you. It's going to go wild, isn't it? So, I, I just wondered. Well, what you do is you never put it down, Carl. Yeah, that's why that's, that's why that bloke has got about, you know, 11 or 12 just carrying him. Exactly. Yeah, you never put it down. You sling it. Who cares? You just throw it, don't you, really far. <laughs> that's not, that I don't think you should throw snakes. But Carl, listen, don't, don't worry, you don't, we're not asking you to get involved with snakes, we're just asking you now, you did, you, you've, you've, you've done ma maths, you think? Yeah. Did no revision for that? No. Okay. Uh, English, do you remember what it was? Did they ask you about Shakespeare? Did they ask you about books? I remember, but I must have done it because I thought that was... It was the English language, not English literature, wasn't it? So it was, was like... It spelling and what? So was it, no, was it, was it like a comprehension, you read a passage and had to ask questions on it, was it... Uh, did you have I to write a short essay? A, I don't know, I can't remember any of that. <laughs> okay. I, I, did a, I did a science. Okay, did physics it? or chemistry? Physics. Alright, well done. And uh, this is all you think? Any you actually took that? You actually took physics, do you say, so you think? You're obliged to do a language, I think. Did you do French? I did French for a bit. But I don't think you are. I don't think you have to do a language. I think you have it GCSE, I think you've got to. Well, English quite good. <laughs> I think that's his language he did. So you don't know about I language. History? Remember. Geography? Just, just you will find out, won't we? Okay. But you just can't remember. You, I, I, I can't believe you can't remember turning up for these things. Because it's quite a big moment in people's lives. It no, is that, the, it is the thing that you've been working to all of your educational life. On the day that the, the things came out, I was working at a print, as a printer. Okay. And it was a really busy day. A lot day. of spelling mistakes that day. It was day, a really busy day, so you're bound to forget. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, but I, I had to use gold ink that day. Oh, and it's, yeah, I mean, you're yeah, not yeah, a printer, yeah, yeah. so you don't, you don't know no, this. No, no, that's the biggie, isn't it? But it's tough. You've got to really get your rollers clean. <laughs> <laughs> Carl, play a record, mate. And good luck with the exam results. Hopefully we'll have them for you by next week. J Harvey on XFM 104.9, the home of the classics. Absolutely. Classics. Classics. Classics, classics, classics. Oggy, oggy, oggy. Oi, oi, oi. Um, well, we were uh, <laughs> talking earlier about this, um, uh, there's this book, They Died Young, right? And there's all these theories about these people, uh, like famous people that, um, uh, aren't really dead. And I remember speaking to someone about this, okay? And they said to me, Bruce Lee is not dead, <laughs> right? They said he's not dead, right? Uh, and I thought I said, well, um, how do you know? I was going, he's going, no, it was a whole big thing by the Hong Kong government, and he's actually working as an undercover cop in Hong Kong. <laughs> I, I using, using his, his kung fu powers. Now, no, he's, apparently he faked his own death, Carl, yeah. so that he could work undercover for the Hong Kong yeah. police, infiltrating gangs, the triads, that sort of thing. Now, my point is this, if you're going to use someone undercover in Hong Kong, right, you know, an undercover cop. I suggest using the most famous Chinaman of all time. That, yeah, that would that's be... that's a guarantee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, when he's taking away a gang, they're going, you look a bit like Bruce Lee. He's going, no, no, I don't, no. See this, this moustache? Looks a bit wonky. Well, it's, I just, just take my word for it. I'm not Bruce Lee, all right? Well, all that stuff you did when you were punching us and kicking us and chop, yes. But, Cohen, I'm not. Yeah. It does look a bit like the stuff in my film, in, in his films. 
in his films, yeah. But it's, it's not. It, it's not. coincidence. No, yeah. The thing is, though, and not sounding bad here, not trying to offend anyone, but they do all look the right. same. Right! They okay. do all look no, the no, same. No, no, it's no. No, I know, no. You know, we're having a serious chat. I'm right. Not, I'm not, you know, I'm not here to upset anyone. Right. And what I'm saying is, over here... I'm so sorry. No, I'm not... Yeah, but you know me, I'm not, I'm not out to upset right. anyone. Right. You're not a racialist? No. What so, do you mean? You, you, are you saying all saying people is, all look alike? Well, look, look at the people over here, right? Yeah. With, like, you've got... No. You've got ginger this... people. Oh, God. You've got people with black hair, you've got people who are fat, mm. people who are thin. Mm. But they're all so sort of fit, which isn't a bad thing. They all do that sort of thing in the park. They're all fit. It's a place where black hair... I mean, when they come here, they take pi pictures of people with ginger hair, don't they? Because they don't get them over there. That's what I'm saying. So calm down. <laughs> so you're saying that Bruce Lee, the most famous Chinese movie star of all they time... They can't tell him apart. Other, no, other trial it. members would... How are they... I mean, how are they going about their business at all? I yeah. mean, what I'm saying is, how, how would they, they even realise yeah. that that was the, the guy? What do they have to do? Wear numbers in, you know, because there's, there's, there's a billion of them. No, but when you, them. when you know them, then you know So them. what? Oh, I see. They can tell each other apart, can they? Well, they've got signals. <laughs> I, this is amazing, <laughs> isn't it? That's how you got away with Simon, it. Simon, which one are you? Just raise your hand, Simon. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Chang, which one's Chang? Chang, good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, it must be murder, mustn't it? Just that can be the only people thing. going into the wrong houses. All the time, <laughs> getting off with their mates' wives. Exactly. Yeah. It must be a nightmare. Though. It must be a nightmare. Um, this I can't, he, please don't complain. He doesn't know what he's doing. So I'm really sorry to anyone. Uh, he honestly does not know what he's saying. <laughs> XFM 104.9. Yeah, but what I'm saying is. Go on. I don't think I am offending anyone. <laughs> okay. Fine. That's all right then. And you know that I wouldn't want to do that. No, before, I know you don't. Oh no. I swore oh, I know. Radio, I said right. If you got kids in the car, turn your radio. <laughs> So before you make any potentially racist remarks, just point out if you are listening and you might be Oriental. Yeah. Please don't take offence. Or go. Oh, oh. You know what I mean. So yeah. Go on then. So what, what was this other dead person? Who's <laughs> not? Carl, play a record. Ricky's having a heart attack. We'll come back. The music of tomorrow is here. XFM. Well, the music of tomorrow is here. <laughs> That's true enough. Yeah. Uh, yeah. XF, XF Must be some sort of muck up with a post. <laughs> <laughs> um, Rick, a lot of the times when I've played uh, Hip Hop Hooray, my uh, hip hop track of the week, yeah. you've sort of scoffed, you've thought that maybe I don't have credibility amongst the hip hop fraternity. No, it's just the way you dance. Well? It's merely the way you dance that, that worries me. Mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. people can't see it, really. And it's sort of like... Imagine if Mr Bean thought he was in D12. You know what I mean? It's It's that sort of... And I don't diss you. I mean, I, I know you're, you're, you're a hip-hop appreciator. You know, I wouldn't expect man. you to diss me. <laughs> or I'm a black queen. Um, but uh, the point is that I just... Uh, there's a little something that Carl's got on tape for you that I think might change your opinion of my uh, whole hip-hop credibility. Oh, no. Um, now, I've told you in the past... It's not you know, videotape, I, is it? Not at all, not at all. Actually, oh. Carl, just play it, just play it. Yo, one, two, one, two, we are the dilated people. Oh, Chilling oh, on oh, hip hop oh. parade. That's right. With Steve Merchant, y'all, XFM 104.9. LA to London, dilated people expanding them. All day. Now, you got that, how about you that? Did that, Carl? That was just when I was hanging out with my homies. No, did it? Did, did, did they come in in the week? They were in the week, I think, and somebody got them to do it for them. You know, no, that was when I was just I was just hanging in the crib with them. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 no. I was that's just very, that's and, very uh, nice. Huh? And, the, and the guy just, put, just laid down some beats for me. Yeah, you know, just let down some vocals and, uh, and I gave him match respect for it. You know, and the place was mad deep with girls at the time. I assume you're going to play Dilated Peoples this week then. Well, maybe. Yeah. Let's play it, Carl. That's very good. Merchant, y'all, XFM 104.9. LA to London, Dilated People expanded on. Respect, guys. Cheers very much. Add it here. Yeah, yeah, guys, just Max in there, lovely. Good to hear from them. Good to hear from the boys. <laughs> well, probably, I'll probably be heading over to LA NYPD <laughs> and just, uh, just you know, chilling with them. Sometime. I'd love them to meet you. You don't have to laugh. They, I'd I, love them to meet you. We would hang out. I know all the the jokes. It's like there. a thing they do on um, MTV or H. like being dilated peoples, and yeah. they come and they make us three look yeah, like, like a rap people. group. Wouldn't that be great? Listen, I told you before. I've always remembered the words of um, of Snoop Doggy Dog. Yeah, bitch is a bitch and a hoe is a hoe. But if a man be acting like a bitch, he's a bitch ass homie. All yeah, right? those, sure. those are the words from sure. the street. I would. Uh, it'd be like you. You two had won a competition or something. <laughs> do you know what I mean? 
like that. I just don't think you can uh, you can believe it that I'd just be hanging out, you know, with sort of like in the crib. People of courage, and you get a chance to meet your favourite. <laughs> it'd be amazing, wouldn't it? Listen, we were talking earlier about uh, the fact that um, Bruce Lee, and it's a well-known fact, yeah. he faked his own death so he could continue his um, undercover police work, as it, opposed to being... Because no one was, you know, he doesn't no look different to anyone else. But I was talking to someone as well recently who, um, utterly convinced, and you get this quite a lot, don't you, especially Americans, that uh, Elvis Presley's still alive. Yeah. And I think, wasn't there some statistic, like, more people believed Elvis was alive than thought, than believed evolution? Was that right? Yes. Something like that? No, 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 no. Um... No, it's something worse than that. It's... It could be something... It was something, something like that. It's something, something like, mad, I don't know, it? it's something like 42% of Americans yeah. believe that Elvis Presley has faked his own death and is still yeah. alive, right? Yeah. And there's this whole book that's been written about it, because, um, Carl, you might be interested in this. I know you're always fascinated by things that have been written down and therefore a gospel. Yeah. And, um... And that you don't have to revise yourself. You just learn off <laughs> exactly. Ian Wright. Yeah. Yeah. But apparently, um, the reason that Elvis is still alive, um, is that there's a number of, sort of, pieces of evidence. One is that no, none of his family could agree which colour pyjamas he was wearing when he died. That's yeah. evidence, apparently. Apparently, um, you know he was an honorary member of the FBI. Well, apparently his signature appears on FBI documents well into the 80s, long after he should have died. Um, apparently no one can agree, there was sums of money a lot that of, only- Yeah, a lot of fat people in dungarees have seen him. Yeah. There's a number of there's sums of money which apparently only he could have given authority to have transferred to other bank accounts. They've moved. Yeah. So this is all evidence that Elvis is still alive. Mm. And um, a lot of people, and I was talking to this guy, and he was saying, yeah, well, of course, the thing is, he, he, the pressures of fame were too much for him, that he faked his own death so that he, he no longer had to be this, this huge icon. You know, he could live an ordinary life. And my query has always been this. If Elvis faked his own death, do you think he, the, the method he'd have chosen is to have shat himself to death whilst on the toilet. Yeah. Yeah, but because he picked that, nobody will doubt it. <laughs> right. <laughs> so Elvis went to the FBI. Yeah. What do you make yeah. of it? Well, exactly. So, what we're saying, Carl, is that there was lots of methods open to him, you know what I mean? It's all like, uh, he didn't go to his, his, his secret police and go, oh, I'm afraid I want to, I want to fake my own death. You know what I mean? And they yeah. go, yeah, that, that. <laughs> Yeah, and what, what, what methods have you got? I like to be found, shit myself down the toilet. You like to do what? I want to be a big, Fat mother, f on yeah. the toilet, just shitting myself to death. My right, I'm just on my ankles. No, the, the, the Elvis is a good idea. I'm just wondering if there's maybe something a little bit more glamorous. If you're in favour of death, I mean, you could take a bullet for the president. Huh. What and shit all over him? Just shit no, 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 we, no, we know crap at all. No, you just, you there just to to take a bullet for him, or you could. There has to be shit involved. Why has there got to be? Has to be shit involved. Why has there got to be crap? I want this way. Make it happen. <laughs> yeah, it's probably the <laughs> car head in hand. Look. Yeah, he's worried about the things we say. Yeah. Jeez. We haven't offended 1.2 billion people. Yeah, a, a fifth of the planet. So, Carl, what do you make of it then? Do you, are you convinced like you say, Elvis is still alive? Um, is, am I getting it mixed up with someone else? Because <laughs> all Elvis, no, no, all no, Elvis's look alike. Because... That, now, that is true. A lot of Elvises do look alike. That's on, safe. On his gravestone, yeah. didn't they get his name wrong? Or is that his brother? Who's his brother? Um, <laughs> Aaron. No, that's his middle name. Yeah. You're not an Elvis um, kind of expert, are you? Hold on, was Elvis was uh, wasn't Elvis a, one of a twin that yeah, died? That died, and I'm sure they got his name wrong on a grave or something. Oh, I don't know. But that's so that's consequently that's proof he's still alive. No, uh, the thing with the uh, still alive thing, um, like I say, he picked that awkward death because nobody would be saying, "Hang on a minute," going round upsetting the family, wanting to talk about it because they'd be embarrassed to be saying, you know, we, he was found sort of. Yeah. In a pile of mess. Weighing 25 stone. Yeah. yeah. So... Because you notice he also expanded to a huge size as well, so he was just a huge fat blob of a man. He also did that to, to add, you know, extra... To the glamour. I, I don't quite understand all this... The... Mowgli. You know, you're talking about Mowgli and you said, oh, what are the gremlins called? Yeah. You were you thinking of, oh, Mugwai. Mugwai. Mm. Yeah. But they to were still... Fair, they were, they they were, were called gremlins. gremlins. Yeah. yeah. It was... But... Yeah. Well, I know what you're thinking. I know, to be fair. But my girlfriend won't be listening now, so <laughs> she'll still think I'm a bit daft. She ne how could, why, why would she ever think that? How long have you been going out with her? About eight years. Well then, wh why would she ever think you're daft? That's the only stupid thing you've ever said, the, the Mogwai thing. Why would she ever think she's going out with a, to be honest, mm. a retard? I, I, think, um, I think it's a very beautiful relationship you must have, you know. Because it's odd, I, I mean, she's a professional journalist or whatever. Yeah. You know, and she works for, is it uh, Radio 5 or something? Uh, BBC Sport. BBC Sport. TV. 
So and Laura Manning never even uh, got her the English results. quite good. Her, is her is English quite good? Her really good. Yeah. So and did she do her exams? Yeah, she's quite bright. Sure. So what do you bring to the relationship? <laughs> I, th I think uh, take the pressure off her. Take Don't the pressure me? off her uh, to do what? You know, like when she's had a stressful day and she comes home and talks to me. I think. Yeah. You would relax me, and that's the truth. I, 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 honestly, but you know, Carl, you can just he can just go. Wow, well, it's all right. Do you know what I mean? He doesn't. He don't get stressed. He sits in his little booth now. He doesn't talk to anyone. His little sound booth all the week. And you just you just you're in your own little world, aren't you? Well, it's interesting because I wonder sometimes what your aspirations are. I was thinking this. I was watching uh, a repeat of Family Fortunes on uh, Challenge TV last night, and it was sort of mid eighties one. And I don't know if it's still the case, but it was the aspirations of the contestants were yeah. so kind of. It was like, and what's your hobby? Well, you know, um, I like to go out when it's nice weather and oh. stay in when well, it's you, not. Well, if you win £2,000, you'd probably be going out when it's nice, couldn't you? Yeah. <laughs> and she was like, well, and I, you know, I, I sometimes like to watch TV, you know, and I was thinking... Wow, you know, man, you've really got some incredible but what, dreams. But what, what, what it's I, just like that. I'm, you're just waiting to die, aren't you? What, That's what all I you're... feel sorry for, right? Two things. Um, you know, in like stars in their eyes, and you get a little fellow, and he and he's gutting fish in a some sort of factory in Bolton, and he comes on, and he does, uh, you know, something like Bobby Darren, okay? And he's a, and and Matthew Kelly comes out after goes well. I don't think you'll be going back to the fish factory. You will. <laughs> you will be going back. You will. Straight back. Yeah. Hey, mate. Yeah. Let's yeah. think of don't all wind, the stars in the rise stars. Up, Kelly, because that's a nasty thing to do. <laughs> I'm trying to think. Um, trying to think of all the uh, stars in the rise contestants that have gone on to great things. What happened to that little fella? Looked like the, the little Alsatian puppy that did Christa Burr. He looked uh, a bit like Christa Burr. He looked like he, li he had problems. Well, I yeah. Now what was it? Is Ian Moore his name was? Now he now. He, he was... Uh, well, like, it's interesting. My friend bought me as an ironic gift for my birthday. He bought me the uh, live video of Ian Moore. Um, you'll be pleased to know that Lady Red was on there, among <laughs> a number of other hits. Um, but it was, it was really, it was called, it had a picture of Ian on the front. It said, Ian Moore, naturally. <laughs> <laughs> His I didn't jacket know was that, too big for him as well. Of course. It was ludicrous. But I don't know if that meant Ian Moore, naturally, like we all know who this guy is. It's Ian Moore. Yeah. Or was it Ian Moore, he's no longer being Christa Burr. He's just natural. What did he sound like when he wasn't being Christa Burr? Christa Burr. Did he, <laughs> really? Because he met him, didn't he? He met... Yeah. Well, Christopher, I think Christopher couldn't wait to get back on the telly. Well, the thing is, I think I think Ian Moore is actually earning more than Christopher <laughs> now. I think... They could have got Christopher on there. Yeah, you, get, you can get Christopher for £1,000, but Ian Moore's going to for 1200 now, <laughs> just a PA to, a, you know, a dat. But he does, lady, anyway, he does all the hits. He does, don't pay the fairy man. Yeah. Don't even say the price. <laughs> does all those. Interestingly, I saw him interviewed once, and uh, Lady in Red's not his favourite song. You're joking. It's bizarre, isn't it? But he was only going to play that if, um, uh, it was the, f uh, fat, uh, ginger, <sighs> Sarah Ferguson. Oh, yeah, yeah. It was only if she was wearing some red. He was only going to play that when? It, yeah, well, it, it was a live thing, and he was only going to play that if she was wearing red or something. Right. Didn't her freckles count? That's beautiful. No, so, it, she had, luckily she had a red, that must have clashed with her a bit. Yeah. A red scarf. On on her face and the highlights in your hair that catch the light. Yeah, such a beautiful lyric. Never right? seen looking so lovely as did uh, The thing is, right? He he misses a rhyme there. He goes, uh, "I'm going to ask you to uh, dance, looking for oh, a little romance." romance. Now he could yeah. have said dance, <laughs> couldn't yeah. he? I uh, I've met a man once in a, in a bar. I was talking to him for some reason. I, I was annoyed by him. I was wound up by him, and um, I said that I'd written Lady in Red, and uh, I never got any money for it because I found that he was like a music lawyer. And he went, well, give me a call, I'll investigate that. <laughs> and he was actually going to do it for me. I, was I love the idea of that. Just, <laughs> Why did you say that? Really bored, and I didn't like him much, and I was just, and I thought that was, um... That Why did you choose change. Lady in Red, though? Because I think I was singing it with a friend of mine, and sure. he came over and went, oh, good voice. And I went, yeah, I wrote this. What it pub is this? <laughs> it, was just, it was North. Is it? Yeah. Never seen looking so lovely as you did tonight. So, yeah, um, anyway, those, that's enough of my Christopher <laughs> anecdotes. <laughs> yeah. That's uh, very much the end of the show. Uh, and uh, it is, it's been a great, it's been a great show. Hang on, have I got time for a song for the lovers, or have I missed that? No. If, if you give it me Chris now. Ralph. Yeah, what are you going to play? What are you going to play? What, are you going to play a song now and then we've got time for it afterwards? No, you'll have to give it me Yeah. Right oh, I better now. dig it out. Well, can, what, can you keep what, yeah, what, what have you chosen? I'll, I'll keep it going. Well, um, a friend of mine who keeps making me little compilations is stuck on an old Tom Waits track, which is uh, from his first album, one that I've not listened to for a while. Brilliant. Listen to it, it's absolutely Brilliant. Brilliant. Can anyone hear me? Yeah, yeah. Just yeah. He's yeah. just getting out of his bag now because we weren't we weren't prepared for this. We we sort of ran out of time. We're having such a great time with the philosophy of Carl. What do you, what do you fancy doing anyway for, with your future? 
Me? You know, I'm just, I'm just gonna tell you now, you know we're still on air, don't you? <laughs> Before it gets too casual. You know we are still broadcasting yeah, yeah. to the capital. Okay. Yeah, what, what do you fancy doing with you just Well, see? once I've made all that money from, uh, suing Chris de Burr, <laughs> um, yeah. no, I, you know, my future, I'm living my future, man. I wanted to have some good mates like yourself and Ricky. Yeah. You know, Carl, I wanted to be on the radio, we're I wanted to be, play great we're, songs. We're like the Three Musketeers, me, you and C. We're, it's like, we're like the original Rat Pack. We're, we're like Ocean's Eleven, I'm Sinatra. Yeah. Um, you're, you, you're Sammy Davis Jr. and you're, what's his name, D Martin, aren't you? Yeah, or Joey Lawrence. What's his name? Joey Lawrence, not Joey Lawrence. Joey Bishop. Joey Deacon. Joey Deacon. <laughs> My dad said the ending on the old one's better than the new one. <laughs> <laughs> we should definitely get your dad in, man. That would be just dynamite. <laughs> when people get tired of you, we've got, we've got the whole Pilkington family <laughs> yeah. to The whole gene pool. Have you seen it? No. Carl, have we got time for this now, really, what, mate? What track? <laughs> to be fair. What? Okay, it's track number one. Now, interesting thing about shoddy. Tom Waits is that, um, this is his, from his first album, and he doesn't sound like that kind of gruff, you know, lived-in guy that he wants to be. He, he actually smoked. sounds like something of a crooner. Yeah. But this is a track called Old 55, which bizarrely, I think, might be covered by the, um, the Eagles. But anyway, it's, I think it's a really no lovely track, really beautiful track. I'll see you next week. And we'll see you next time. Say goodbye, Carl. So, yeah. Say sorry. For what? For if you offended anyone. I didn't. <laughs> so if I say sorry, that's saying I'm guilty. <laughs>